start recording and it is Wednesday and we had another case of the shakes with uh, Facebook didn't want to participate or cooperate and get us uh, get us going where we needed to be but uh, we're here now so we'll let everybody tune in and uh, get a uh, get up on the screen here and uh, let me move this over to the proper window so we can get our chat window so we can see everybody what's going on got uh, Ronnie Jorge, George, Scott, Ross, what's up guys? Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate y'all being here. It's another day of quarantine. Kelly. And as you guys <laughs> uh, are tuning in, you're seeing like, wow, these guys all have headphones on and they all have microphones. It's like a podcast. What's going on? Well, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, we definitely wanted to uh, talk about some streaming etiquette today. So uh, what better way to talk about streaming etiquette than to actually have proper audio because that's where it all starts. So we all decided to uh, bust out our broadcast microphones and uh, put on the headphones and talk to you guys that way. So today on the, uh, on the stream, we've got our good old buddy, David DJ King. Rep what up y'all? Rep in Orlando, Florida, who uh, is our frequent, uh, I, I'm going to just start calling you the color commentator because that's kind of what you are here to this. Oh, that works. <laughs> you know, you're rocking the headband. You always got the energy. Uh, so Always happy to be on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, always happy to have you here. Uh, Marcel, what's up, Amsterdam? Thanks for joining in. Marcel is a new, one of the newest uh, um, uh, DJs added to the uh, channel. He'll be uh, rocking some overnight stuff from, uh, from Amsterdam in the, in the Netherlands. Michael John, what's going on? DJ Mike West. Good set today, man. I love the computer head. That was great. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see any of Mike's set, but yeah, he put this filter on with this big uh, old school like computer screen with like the digitized pixel uh, eyes. It's pretty uh, pretty cool. And then also joining us today, we have uh, our good bud, DJ Lex, aka DJ Bueller. Thanks. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is going to be a long day. And then uh, we also have uh, Boogie B, who's going to uh, boogie on his way on in here as soon as he gets back uh, from running an errand. And uh, you never know when Crush is going to pop up. I'm pretty sure he's not going to tune in today because he uh, was up really late into the morning. So I'm pretty sure he's sleeping right now. Hey, look at that. We got our 1,001 follower right now, by the way. If you guys want hey. the channel, the channel reached uh, a milestone uh, a little bit while ago. I didn't think it was going to happen. Mike was going pretty long without any followers on his uh, set. And then he, the only followers of, of his whole set of Mike West's set happened to be the thousandth follower on the channel. 10 days, thousand followers. Congratulations to all you guys because that's a testament to how hard you guys have been working and uh, promoting and contributing to the, uh, to the channel. So thank you. Uh, now on to 10,000. So uh, we don't need to make a big deal about 2,000 or 5,000. It's 10,000. That's the next goal. <laughs> the so, channel's only like 10 days old, isn't ten, it? 10 days, literally 10 days old. That's so, amazing. Uh, like 200 and like, I think it's like 223 hours of uh, content. Uh, so Our far. little baby, a little baby. So, so what were you expecting by this time? Do you have goals and everything all mapped out? Or are you just kind of like, my, uh, my, goal, my goal was five, was 500 a week. So we've, we've pretty much obviously passed that. Um, and we're at 13,000 and a half views. Um, I, my, I'd like to be, I'd like to be at 2,500 followers and at about 30,000 views before I um, start bringing in some, some, you know, connections that I have uh, that will get behind this and blow it out of the water. Um, because, you know, there has to be a strong base, you know, averaging 30 to 40, follow, 30 to 40 viewers per stream is, is nice, but we need to be in the hundreds. So, but we're, we're just getting started. I, there's no concern on my face. I'm not worried about it. Uh, I know that we're making great strides. I mean, Tashi last night from Japan, uh, he hit a peak uh, for us uh, so far at 94 viewers at once. Oh, wow. Which, which nice. is great. You know, if, if this channel was only on for four or five hours a day, we would probably be averaging two to 300, averaging two to 300 viewers. But because we're on 24 hours and there's such variety and such, you know, gaps of time between all of the uh, you know DJs on different ends of the spectrum and people can log in from anywhere it really gives us uh, more it gives us a larger playing field it gives us more time to cover and gives us a lot larger uh, goals to, to hit 
Um, I know that if we were just doing like this awesome four hour weekly or I'm sorry, daily, you know, deal where we were online for just four hours from like, you know, six to 10 PM Pacific. So, you know, uh, nine to one in the morning Eastern, I know that we'd probably have killer numbers like killer, but it wouldn't be as special. And, and by doing it this way, we're able to reach a global audience. We've got, I've been, I've been paying very close attention. We've got viewers starting to follow the channel from every corner of the globe. Uh, you know, we, we've got some guy, great guys, you know, now in uh, all throughout Europe, uh, you know, uh, France and Italy. We, I got a guy from Italy joining the channel next week. Uh, Belgium, uh, Amsterdam, Germany, Spain, Croatia, um, uh, Austria. Uh, there's some really amazing, amazing stuff going on uh, with, with that. And then we've got a, um, a guy in South Africa. We've got a guy in Australia. We've got a couple of people now in Asia that are, that are jump, jumping on. We've got a DJ Connie from India, and he's got a couple of other guys from that region that are going to start jumping on over the next couple of weeks. So it's really amazing that we are able to bring video DJs from all over the world to to do this because all it's doing is just opening up the doors and just putting more exposure uh, across the land. I mean, I'm looking at some of these other guys like four color Zach and DZ trip and shortcut and all of their DJs, all, all their followers and all their people who are chatting. It's like 90% DJs who are in there. And those DJs are mostly us based. So the fact that we're going more of a global reach and we're really going at all hours and we're kind of bringing more of a statement to what video DJing is, is that's the overall goal. It's the overall uh, mission that we're trying to accomplish. So with that being said, let's go into today's topic which is streaming etiquette. So we uh, uh, thought it would be a good idea. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to take this opportunity to uh, talk today about streaming etiquette because there's a lot of people who are not really doing the best job that they could be doing. And that's, I want to stress on that because we're not trying to call anybody out. That's not what's going to happen here. No names are going to get dropped because that's not important. What's important is if you're one of those people and you're watching and some of the things we talk about resonate with you. It's like, oh, you know, I could do that better. Then take the advice and run with it because that's really what this is about. This channel, this, this group on Facebook, this community, it's all about the brotherhood. It's all about getting everyone involved, asking for help, getting the help, finding the resources, and making your presentation the best it could possibly be so that your brand as a DJ is represented in that way. And when it comes time for someone to make a decision over booking uh, you, know, you over somebody else, you have the high road because you have taken the steps to perfect your craft. Well, you know, I, you got to say this, like it's kind of new and it's not like we had to, like, we pretty much had to figure out how to do this overnight. Me personally, um, I didn't know OBS could do green screen until yesterday. And I was like, oh, how come my camera doesn't work? And then I saw another tutorial was like, oh, OBS could do green screen. No wonder why. Now I have to reroute everything in my system. So it's, it's like a learning curve. But now that we have this community and anybody that has questions, like I didn't even know how to like do the dual Twitch account thing until today. It's like... I don't, I don't know how everybody could keep up with all this uh, so fast. It's like we had to learn it overnight. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> it's like, I have a huge knowledge and all this stuff. And it's like, whoa, this is like a whole nother world right now. <laughs> but I'm so glad we have everybody to like bounce off of to like figure it out. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Uh, it, 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 having Learning curve, but now that we have this having everybody uh, being able to be a part of this is really, really uh, well. By the way, because this is, uh, um, oh wait, no, I didn't do that. Why do I even have OBS still open? <laughs> We were we were experimenting on sending this uh, the the this through OBS to uh, to Facebook, but we ended up getting Facebook working. I was like, I was like, wait, can you guys hear them? And obviously they can because you're uh, you guys are are uh, no one's saying can't hear you. So, uh, Lex, what do, what about you? What do you what do you think with uh, with with all of where we're standing as a community with the video DJs and what what we really need to kind of f focus on as a whole before we start diving into the details? Oh, um, let's see here. Well, there's, um, it, it's, I, I found it's really tough, uh, sometimes because when you're, when we're DJing and we're, we're really in it, it's really, it's a balancing act to try and interact, you know, when you're talking about etiquette and interact with the people in the chat, um, and those kind of things. Um, it's really difficult because you're mixing, you're focused on your performance and you can't always turn to left and say, Hey, how you doing? Hey, welcome to the chat. Hey, you know, so, um, 
<laughs> that's one of the one of the biggest challenges right now, and I had I, especially in the lines of etiquette because I think um, I think with social media and with live chats, if you're not talking to other DJs, like DJs probably aren't. They're like, I don't want to bug him. He's DJ. He's spinning. I'm not going to mess with him. But the people, the public, you know, the fans or whatever that are coming in, you can't chat with them a lot of the time, and so. Um, that's kind of something that we need to figure out how to do that better or to have other people do that on our behalf, you know, moderators and all that kind of thing. So I think, um, I think there's a discussion to be had there about techniques and even bots, you know, <laughs> to help, to help do that work. I think that's a good segue. Let's go, let's go into that. So, you know, when you're, when you guys are streaming and you're, you know, obviously we're going to mainly keep this conversation more gen more generic to twitch just so everyone's clear because i think most people who are watching this are really have really veered away from facebook or instagram as their main source of broadcast it could be a secondary or or even a third uh source of where they're sending their stream as well but i think i think we're at a point now to where everyone has accepted that twitch is the platform to stream on. So the, the way we're going to talk about all of these uh, different, um, you know, advice and tips and, you know, proper, you know, proper guy, uh, best practices will be mainly towards Twitch. So with Twitch, you know, having the ability to see a chat room in real time and see what people are saying and commenting on, and then not only commenting back in the chat room, but being on the microphone and, and engaging with the chat room vocally off of a comment in the chat sends, I mean, it goes miles. It sets you apart so far from so many other people because at the end of the day, your viewers, they just want to connect. They want to connect with whether you're, you're, what, it's your music or whatever your style is or who you are. But by you showing them that this is live, and it's real and you can connect it right then and there, that, that conversion is absolutely just amazing. Um, and that's something that's special. And I think that everyone needs to realize that, that the more that you can com uh, converse with your audience from a, from a standpoint of, of talking on the microphone, you know, like right now, hey, Jose Heredia, thanks for joining us. Mars Franco, good to see you. Chris Laurie, you know, Jason Albertson, you know, gay okay, guys, thanks for joining in today. Thanks for tuning in. I've just connected with people who just came in, who took the time to comment in the chat and let me know that they're there. So I'm letting them know that they're there. You know, hey, Joe, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Long time. Hope all is well. You know, now they know that, oh, wow, this is live. This is real. And I can, you know, I, oh, I'm going to ask for a song or, oh, I'm going to tell the DJ this was great. Or oh, the DJ just asked for me to follow. Let me show my support. You know, some people just want the gratification of being acknowledged at the end of the day, especially now in the times that we're living in, people are cooped up in their house. They're, they're, they're staring in front of a screen longer than they probably started in front of a screen ever before. And they're lonely and they're alone. And yeah, they've got their normal friends and their family members and stuff, but you know, to be able to connect with somebody who might be on the other side of the planet or the other side of the country or even the other side of the town virtually at that moment gives you so much more leverage over any other competitor because you are connecting in a way that most people don't even know how. And look, not everybody's a mic person. Not everybody can get on a microphone and talk. Then that's okay. If you're not, if you don't really have that confidence, which is okay, there's everybody at one point didn't have the confidence to talk on a microphone. And if you don't have that confidence, there's ways to, to build that confidence. And we can talk about that either later on another, another session, but get in the chat. Be, be in the chat room, talk to them as yourself under your screen name and re reply, reply to what they're saying, you know, and ask for engagement and interaction. And, you know, that could lead to a lot more conversion on followers, on subscribers, on interaction, people using the bits, all these different models that they've created on Twitch. And beyond that, outside of the walls of Twitch, new followers on Instagram, social media, email lists. These are the ways to, to generate and build an audience, build a following is to engage with those, those viewers, because those viewers ultimately, that's who you're DJing for. It's the same different, same, same exact, uh, it's no different than when you're at a nightclub or a bar and you're DJing for a crowd and look, you're ultimately there to, to drive sales at the bar. So the, there's revenue being made by the establishment that's paying you. 
well, this is your establishment. You're, it, it's your channel on Twitch. It's your audience that you're building. So make sure you acknowledge them so that they in return will reward you by either spending money or following you and giving you acknowledgement and credit. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, it's, I think it's, there's some kind of psychological fact that people love hearing their own names. So yeah, <laughs> you just got that going for you. And, and like now, you know, as you were talking about um, getting on the mic and people that aren't on the mic and, and I'm like, wow, it's, I, I've been, I've kind of seen, I've been spinning for 30 years and I came from the school of the DJ doesn't say anything. Like literally when, when you're at a club, when I'm at a party, I'm speaking, my music is speaking for me. And then as these new generations come up and you want to call them the millennial generation, they're on the mic. You know, like obviously you, there, was a, there was a change at some point where people started getting on the mic and hyping it up. And that was like, oh, like it's okay for DJs to get on the mic and do that. And that might sound crazy for some people because they've either always done that. But for me, it was a conscious change in my, in my performance. It's like, oh, I actually have to be a hype man. I have to get on the mic, especially in today's market. So when you kind of talked about, hey, if you're afraid to get on the mic, you need, you need to do what you are afraid of the most and challenge yourself and work on your mic skills even more than ever because that's, it's not just about the music. It's about an entire entertainment package. Absolutely. Absolutely. Scott? Yeah. Um, there's a lot going on behind the deck. I mean, me personally, I like to be in the club and have people around me and I have that element as well. Um, but in, inside the studio, it's just like a mental game personally uh, to get over that. But everything's been getting easier as it goes. Uh, I have my phone up, so I have the chat going. And I'll be like, oh, someone said something, so I'll make sure to talk to them. You know, it's just for me, the way I had it set up, and I got a way easier, bit, uh, better stream flow going on right now. And I can't can't wait to get on to the next one because every time I stream, I learn something new, like completely new. Like it's a whole new world every time I stream. And I don't even, I don't, I thought like I spent so much time. And I'm like, Oh, I got this. And now, now that it's getting easier, like uh, I can't wait to start doing more of the talking slash texting. Uh, this Thursday, I actually got a buddy of mine coming over and he's an MC. So I'm going to be doing more of the, the, the music mixing. I'm gonna, and he's going to be uh, talking. And then normally the wife pops on and she's the one doing the, doing some texting as well. So it's kind of like Mrs. Um, DJ King. Yeah, right. Mrs. DJ King. Okay, so, I've got one of those. There's a Mrs. Mystery that pops in on Friday nights. I, I know. With me more and more. <laughs> it's, it's been fun though, but it's, it's like so much to learn all at once. And you know, you're just going to get better at it every time you're up there. So don't be scared. Uh, get out of your comfort zone. Is that a whole new world uh, uh, edit that, uh, that I, that I <laughs> might that be I, coming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it uh, might be no. coming. And with that, let's, you know, let's kind of shift now to what you, what you were just talking about with the chatting, you know, um, a way to engage with the chat that I found to be very useful. And I think a lot of people are definitely um, uh, doing this is that getting a secondary device, uh, whether it's your, a phone, a tablet, even another yeah. laptop, you know, like this, look, that's, that's the chat room on the channel right now. And this is just always on. And this is how I'm communicating. And when I'm streaming, I just put that over with my rig and I type there. So that way I don't have to have a, a browser open with the, the video. I see if I'm mixing, I see what my videos are. I see them on my, on my output window in a mixed emergency. I don't need to have a browser open killing bandwidth and processing power on my computer to see that I can just open it up on my iPad. I've done it on my cell phone. I've been, I've literally been on a, well, I am a little bit different than you guys because I have to be monitoring this thing 24 seven, but I'm literally just on a walk or I'm, I'm out and about. And I just, you know, like, oh, well, let me, uh, let me go in and just uh, monitor what's going on in the chat. Uh, and if I need to change anything or do anything. So use the tools that are, that are, op that are available to you. And I think that you can definitely uh, add another device, uh, like a tablet or a, um, a phone or another computer. You know, I know a lot of people out there have like three or four laptops just because they're maniacs like me. Um, and use that. So that way you're not killing the computer that you're streaming from. Um, Anything else on that topic on the on the the secondary device guys you want to add? You know, you know, I'll so everything you said, totally on board with. And but I realized so I had my I had my phone as my chat device, so I'd log into my Twitch um, Twitch chat on my phone. And when I I always look at my performances, my recorded performances, um, and I'm always usually doing a webcam. A lot of people are not doing a webcam, but when 
I looked at my performance and I was on my phone half the time, you know, like the, the uninterested DJ in the club that's chatting on the phone. And I would get on the mic and be like, you know, just to let you know, I'm chatting with you guys right now. It's not like I'm bored and I'm like texting my buddy and be like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing this stupid Twitch broadcast right now. No, it's like, so, but I, I got that. That's what it looks like. Do you know what I mean? And you guys have been there. So, so if you're going to do that, if you're going to get on a, a device, be like, hey, I'm chatting with, you know, get on the mic and be like, I'm chatting with you guys right now. It's not that I'm this bored DJ and I'm not interested in you guys. So what I, to avoid that, I do, because I, I use my laptop and, and, and send the signal to a broadcast computer. I now, it's better if I, it looks better if I'm doing it on my laptop than on a secondary device because it's okay, it's acceptable for the DJ to look at the laptop screen. Does that make, so they don't know. So I do my chat and then I mix and I bring in my songs. So I actually stopped using my second device when I'm doing a webcam. So that's just a little caveat because you don't want to come across as that DJ, as the texting DJ. So yeah, and that makes total <laughs> sense. If you're on camera, you don't want to be looking like you're texting the whole time because that's just, you know, that cool. And, you know, Yuma actually, uh, uh, you know, Yuma Trip, DJ Trip, just commented a minute ago saying to also have an in-house producer, which, you know, could be your spouse or your best friend or somebody who's just, a, who doesn't even need to be in the same house as you. It could be a friend, <laughs> literally, who they've agreed, like, oh, yeah, while, my, while I'm streaming, can you field and answer questions uh, so that way I can, you know, uh, I can focus on the stream and I don't need to really do stuff. Or, or if somebody's asking me something important, hit me up directly just so I know that that's an important thing I need to uh, address. Uh, you know, you can also pop out the browser. You can also um, you know, pop out the chat browser, the chat part of the uh, the browser. There's a lot of things you can do to not seem like if you're if you are on webcam, if you're using webcam, and you don't want to seem like you're just constantly staring at the screen. How how many times have we seen DJs, uh, you know, especially obviously audio DJs who are just not doing any video and they're just staring at the screen on camera? I I mean, I cannot stand it. I literally yeah. will not watch it. Resting, resting DJ face, though. Resting DJ face. Smile. If you're on camera, you yeah, always got to smile. You that's know, one thing Casilius brought up. She's like, people forget to smile. And it's like, you should probably look at a monitor that's sending out the master output so you can see what you're looking like and be like, yes. just put yourself in check. Am I standing up straight? Do I look like I care or like I want to be there? You know, like it's it, one thing to, to project something. It's one thing to see yourself back. You know, it, maybe you think you're giving out something that's not actually there. And even if you don't have a sec like a way to push a secondary uh, output stream from your camera, go get a TV. Go get a, one of your TVs and put it on a stand and, and download Twitch and put Twitch on your TV. You don't, you, you're, look, you're going to see it in a delay, but at least you see how you look and you see out the whole setup. You should be able to see at all times what the, what the viewer sees. That's really important. You want to make sure that what the viewer's experience is, that you're somewhat proofing it and making sure that that's good. And, uh, and that's, that's something I want to segue into now because I think that we've-, well, we've It's not mandatory to be yourself on the screen, right? No, it is not. I mean, I, have you seen my-, my, my No, no. Not on. There's, there's no pressure, but if you're going to put no yourself on, you know, camera. like want to be there, right? <laughs> you know? I have no problem being on camera. I just, for my personal preference- just for streaming for so many years, I guess, you know, with, with mixing lab and with all these other guest streams, things I've done, I'm just right now, especially at home. I just don't want to, I'm not going to go to the effort to set up. And that's just me. I, the, everyone is their own thing. I don't want to set up the whole green screen. I don't want to set up cameras. I don't want to set up lights. I don't want to do all that. I just want to trans transmit my creativity through music videos. And that's just me. But in a couple of weeks, when I go back to the office, that might change. I might actually set up something and, change it to where I'm back on camera again. But I don't know. I don't know where that's going to go. But I do think that everyone should have a preview or, you know, live monitor uh, that show, that's showing you what everyone's seeing. For me, I actually have a, a secondary laptop uh, that I usually uh, hook up and I usually have the, the music. Even though I'm not even looking at myself, I'm looking at the final product on Twitch on a laptop that's sitting off on the corner, just muted, but it's still the live stream. And it, it uh, it's helpful because it it makes sure it makes sure that you uh, are. It also just makes sure you're quality controlling your your own you know your own your own product technically. Um, I personally like looking like a fool on camera just to like get out my personality and to be just different. I mean, cause nobody could be me, right? I could be, <laughs> and also I guess that's a little bit of element of like showing that you are DJing, but still, you know, uh, it, whatever separates you and whatever you're comfortable with, just know if you're going to be on screen. 
you want to be there. Act like it. <laughs> There's definitely only one uh, DVD J. King. There's only one of me, right? <laughs> so the other thing, um, so next thing I was going to uh, start talking about was um, basically, yeah, the, the being the on screen thing is I, wa- I wanted to go into a little bit. Deep. So we touch, we obviously all know standing on screen and resting DJ face and not being interactive. You might as well just not be on screen or only come on every once in a while and be like, you know, Hey guys, you know, like, you know, say, say something. But uh, if you're, if you're really, if you're one of those guys who you're really focused and you're, you're, you're you dive into your, you know, your, 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 uh, your laptop and you're really wanting to look through what you're doing and you want to, and you're messing with the settings, you're changing effects or doing all that. Maybe it's not best that you're on camera all the time. If you want to be on camera and you have a camera set up, maybe just put yourself on camera every now and then, but you know, and change scenes in OBS. I mean, get a, get a, get a, uh, a stream deck, you know, uh, a, whatchamacallit, uh, a, a uh, Elgato, um, you know, get, be able to just transfer Patrick card. No, 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 no. The, um, uh, the stream decks. Oh, does it, does everyone know what I'm talking about or no? I, I don't. Hold on. Holding. Well, the, the other thing is just in OBS. There we go. In OBS, you can switch scenes and the scenes can have different cameras and angles or just focus on your video mix. So even OBS has some kind of s- studio scene, you know, switching functions. Yeah, which I just figured that out. I was running everything through Resolume to my OBS, and the OBS was only pushing out one signal, and it was destroying the computer that I was DJing on, and I could barely see the waves. And then I figured out that you could switch scenes in OBS, and it did chroma key, and now I spent all last night (laughs) relining everything. (laughs) Don't make that same mistake, guys. So does everyone see what I've got, what I'm sharing my screen right now? Yes. So this is a, this is stream deck. Um, and this is basically an amazing, amazing device that I think everybody should look into getting into. And you can program this to OBS using their app to basically um, be able to change your scenes uh, instantly. Uh, so you can jump between your scenes. So you don't need to like go into OBS and start, you know, messing with all the settings and, and doing all that. So this is a great, and they, 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 make, they, make, they make these. So and, this, uh, is, uh, this is stream deck. They make these um, different, this is um, basically different sizes. Uh, so it's, it's a hardware, it's basically a hardware controller for correct. OBS or your streaming you, you, app. Yeah. So you can just yep. put hotkeys there. Yeah. That's, well, like that's, a MIDI controller, right? Yeah. yeah. Got it. Uh, yeah. Right there. There's a nice picture of it. And, uh, let's see, I think. Oh, it, and you can put pictures in the, in the knobs, yep. keys. They have, look, they got a mat, they have a giant one XL, or if you, uh, if you don't think that you're going to be using very much, you can do a mini. What do these go for? I don't see a price, or maybe my screen's. Yeah, they go to the shop. The shop now for the pricing. Um, okay. And then they also even have a mobile uh, version that you can use on your phone. So, not to get too much of a, a tangent on this topic because it is relevant, is that OBS on Mac? Can you map MIDI to it? Because if you can't, one of those stream decks is a great option. But I haven't. I can. I know you can do hotkeys, but I'm not sure if you can unless you have to map MIDI as hotkeys and you trigger hotkeys with MIDI, Mac OBS, I have not been able to map with, uh, with MIDI. So that stream deck might be a good solution to do that. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's what a lot to, of for uh, controlling. Yeah. If you look at, if you actually look at the comments right now, a lot of people are talking about this. Uh, there are a lot of them are talking about how they're using it and, and uh, um, they're, uh, they're, you know, basically talking about the free app and they're talking about, you know, using a MIDI controller. They're using it as a, they're using deck app for the phone. Some of them are saying, that's what I'm doing. Uh, stream, deck can, stream Deck can get a bit pricey. Well, you got to pay to play, buddy. But, uh, but, so there's an app. Easy now. There's an <laughs> app for that. That might be a good solution. Oh, he, knows, he knows better. Yeah, just, I didn't, it's a just, pandemic. <laughs> uh, so I didn't realize that there's an app for that for your iPad. I mean, I've got, I'm controlling. I use my, I use this guy right here. I'm doing all of my MIDI controls of my whole broadcast from, from here. From Touch OBS, uh, to, yeah, yeah, Touch, touch OBS. OBS. So if I are you using Touch OBS, Touch OBS, Touch OBS, yeah. yeah. So if um, yeah, if I just can switch, if I can do some cool scene switchings in OBS with that Stream Deck app, that's the way to go. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to go. You can, uh, I believe, for Touch OSC, you can uh, program it to OBS, but it will require a probably a, a, a third party MIDI app that it's going to have to basically uh, 
you know, you have to port your touch OSC to the third party app that, that will basically go through. Uh, Kelly saying touch portal is free and that that's something to look into. Uh, yeah. Spots. I said the same thing, map, map them on touch portal. Uh, he's using it for different camera angles on, on and lower thirds. So yeah, so there's, there's lots of options and this is something that everybody should definitely look into because if you're planning on doing different uh, scenes, which I think a lot of people are, a lot of people are really starting to get interested. I mean, look, look behind Lex guys, look at, look at the size of his green screen. It's tiny and look at his show on Saturday and look at what he can do with just that setup right there. It's pretty impressive. So think about that. Um, you, there's, it's not hard to set up a green screen. You just need a little bit of space. You just need to be able to have something behind you and you need to have a, somewhat of a good lighting setup. So that way you're well lit. Um, and we get to talk about green screens on another, uh, another, uh, chat on a different week, but, um, there's plenty of tutorials, uh, and you can always go to DJology. Yeah. And, I can, and I can definitely show you how to do a ghetto green screen. Cause that's what I've got. I've got a ghetto green screen, but it totally works. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so being able to change your scenes is definitely, I think is, I think that scene changing is where we're at. You know, um, I'm even going to probably start inputting scenes. I might even introduce a scene this week to, uh, to my, my stream and just basically have a big giant window that has, you know, with a cool frame and have my logo built into it and maybe some social stuff on the bottom. I'm still not going to add any camera angles, but I'm, I'm definitely looking to add the scenes because I'm seeing the impact, uh, from viewers, um, when they're, you know, when people have cool different scenes up, they're, they're impressed by it. And it's definitely engaging. Um, you know, Tashi on, on Tuesday, last, I mean, last night, I can't believe it was only last night. Uh, Tashi last night, he, uh, his scene is like all over the place. There's a lot of stuff. There's stuff everywhere, but it works. And he had an average view time. He had a two hour set and his average view time was an hour and 49 minutes. Wow. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about, the fact that, that you can do different sets. Uh, yeah. And uh, there's all sorts of things you can do. You can constantly change things up whenever there's a new, you know, holiday or, or something cool, you know, going on, on in the world. Um, you basically can, you know, use that as reference and, and do something with it. You know, look at all the stuff we've seen with like Tiger King and all the stuff we just saw with Star Wars and, you know, it's now Cinco de Mayo and, you know, I'm, you know, got Memorial Day weekend coming up. You know, people can do scenes where they're at the beach or there's so many things you can do. And the, the scenes are, are really, really captivating. I think from a, from a viewer standpoint, I think the, conver the, 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 uh, the conversion on uh, viewers is, is a lot higher when you have scenes. Well, I've got a question for people in the chat. I mean, how, how many of you guys in the chat are uh, comfortable with making your own scenes? And if I was to do a DJology one to show people how I made some scenes, if they would be interested in that, see how that goes. Because I was streaming with one I made yesterday and I also made like a Star Wars one. And I was pretty impressed with how fast it took me to do it, but how good it looked at the same time. And you know, the, the interesting thing is that... Um, you can do, like I said, I, I call my green screen the ghetto green screen, but if any of anyone have seen any of the things that I'm doing with it, it's, it's all about the graphics. It's all yep. about, it's all about, um, I mean, I've seen some really cool like virtual sets that you can see, oh, this is like a 3D fun virtual set. And then my, at least my angle is no, I actually want this to look as real as possible. Like people have to do a double take and be like, wait, it, what what is like their brain has to figure out like what is going on so like that that's the cool thing about we all have the ability and access to those graphics we all know someone we all you know or e even just amongst this group you've got a lot of graphic creators that you can be like hey i want to do a scene or i need a 3d logo or i need something like that you can just reach out to the this group and you can get some amazing total professional quality stuff and be and be paying just a fraction of, you know, the industry prices. Yeah, absolutely. And there's uh, more on the way too with that, you know, uh, you know, there's uh, some really interesting uh, and, and captivating stuff coming up uh, to be released soon for you guys. Um, you know, I've been, I've been consulting with Lex on a new project that's going to be coming out where uh, you guys, the, some of the stuff that he's doing on his, uh, on his uh, show will be very easy to, to instill into all everyone else's uh, shows, which is all the overlays and 
you know, the, the constant, you know, changing up of, of uh, backgrounds and graphics and all these different things. So, um, you know, definitely uh, would love to hear anyone's thoughts in regards to what they'd like to see too. Like, oh, okay, it would be cool if we could make this happen or that happen because that'd be, that'd be cool to do. And we'll talk more in the next coming weeks about that new project. Uh, it's still just a little early to, to put it out there, but when we're ready to go um, and uh, bring it to you guys, I think there'll be some, uh, some exciting new things coming that uh, will be uh, accessible for a lot of, uh, a lot of people to have, the freedom to be able to do a lot of things that they couldn't do unless they had like a tremendous amount of computing power. Um, let's, uh, so let's jump to um, other ways to convert uh, your audience into like loyal followers. Um, and of course, Brian, who was sitting patiently in the background, uh, jumped off. So let me text him too and just tell him that we're about to talk about that because he was going to do some say some things on that was this about the free stuff that was on the on the screen what yeah. was it yesterday or the day before uh that was like who wants free stuff Mon kind of thing Mon yeah monday monday yeah so he does that a lot on his on his other you know when he when he streams locally and it works it actually works well for this channel so far it hasn't yielded high results uh one or two people so what's he have like a lead magnet um no i'm just talking about just in real time just basically seeing in real time how, you know, like, Hey, anybody want to, you know, who wants a free video game? You know, mail, we'll mail it to you. You just, the first person to do this gets it. Well, on the channel, cool. It took a little while to like get one person to even like send their, you know, Oh, I want it. But when he does stuff on his own, it actually uh, does quite well. So I think it's just the channel right now. It's just a lot of, a lot of DJs. And I think a lot of DJs don't care. Are you telling me it's time to go through the garage and see what I can give away for a like? <laughs> well, you know, that, that's actually something um, I saw someone doing that they were giving away prizes and they were items that they found in their house. So if you could just find some items in your house and be like, you know, and they, so, you know, I saw, um, I've seen people do this. I've seen, I've seen DJ Tripp do this where he, cause he does a big eighties party. And so he'll do 80s trivia and he'll actually, you know, create a graphic in Photoshop with the question, just like you were on a game show, you know, and be like, hey, the first person to answer this question gets one of my mixes. I'll send, you know, I'll send you a video mix or an MP3 or whatever, or this item that I found around my house, this remote control, I'll mail to you, you know, whatever. I'll you take know, just, it. Just have, have fun with it. Um, you know, going back to the, you know, the crowd interaction and, and those kinds of things. And, um, and that builds a little bit of loyalty. You know, I, I've recently, um, so some, some of, some of you may know or heard of DJ Bueller from satellite radio. It's actually, there's actually a production team is actually DJ Bueller and I'm one of the guys on there. And I never capitalized off of, I, I didn't realize it, DJ Bueller really had a following. And so I, you know, created this Facebook page, created this website and just kind of kept on growing and growing. And so I started doing a YouTube channel with my mixes, you know, and all, you know, I can't monetize it obviously. And, and my friend says, you know, you ought to get a, a Patreon account. Um, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Patreon, but I had never heard of it. And it turns out people are making a full-time living off of Patreon for the craziest things. So if you have some kind of skill or you have a following that people want, you can monetize that into monthly subscriptions, like $3 a month, $5 a month, but you've got people that have like thousands and thousands of monthly subscribers at $5 a month. That's like, you know, 50 grand a month for just pushing out digital content or all these things. So, so what I, I started a Patreon account and started having some like literally a month old and I got my first check and I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. But this also, um, it kind of mirrors the, the Twitch model of tiers and subscribers. So on Twitch, you can also have some subscriber. Now in the Twitch world, the perks, like the perks are like, well, there's no ads and there's emoticons and those kinds of things. There's, they're not like amazing perks, but like if you can do the, the, the Twitch and the Patreon and kind of use both of those and try to call, try to cross-reference those together and actually offer some real world like mixes or hats or shirts or that kind of thing. And then rather than, and, and I know I'm kind of, it sounds like I'm talking people out of subscribing on Twitch, but I'm not. 
but I'm just saying that if you have a Patreon account, you can actually make a lot more money than you can at Twitch and you can offer things to your subscribers. And I even send out to my subscribers on Patreon. I actually say, um, like I give them priority requests or, you know, so I make up my own perks that I offer to these people. And what I'm going to be doing next is I figured out a way how I'm going to be able to take a video, like a zoom video call. So I often DJ with a virtual stage set up and I have the music videos on the screen behind me. I'm going to be able to have my Patreons, you know, the, the top fans call into my zoom on my phone and I'm actually going to put their live video faces on the video screen during my broadcast. So rather than just giving someone a shout out and be like, yo, here's, here's my buddy, Evan from LA. Evan's going to get on the screen and go, ah, I'm on TV, mom. Hi. You know? So I think, I think, once people start doing those kinds of things and engaging their fans in that way, it's, it's uh, just takes it, it takes it to a whole new level. Yeah. Exciting to see how that pans out. Definitely. Naked cosplayers <laughs> in the chat. Someone said naked cosplayers. <laughs> uh, Marcel had a question. Go ahead and type your question, man. You don't need to say you have a question. You can just type it and we'll, we'll catch it. You have to raise your hand. Anybody? No. <laughs> so it says in the Netherlands, the people don't subscribe and pay for, for DJs to watch. How is that in the United States? They're subscribing. Well, they're just yeah. not subscribing in troves. Well, it's pretty much worldwide. I mean, just no, I'm confused. It, well, just, I think, I think maybe just saying the, the, in general, the community, it's not, it's not, you know, they just don't do that. They don't, um, they, they will don't subscribe or they will, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I get, I don't know in the U S they do. Um, you know, we, if you have any kind of success on your Twitch channel, you've already got, you know, a handful of subscribers and affiliates and advertising revenue. It is absolutely tough though. Um, yeah, but I think, definitely. I think Twitch isn't about making, I, I, Twitch isn't about making money unless you're huge, you know, like I, when, I, when Z trip, you know, Z trip goes on and gets 12,000 uh, viewers, you know, or, or whatever he gets, you could turn that into money. Thousand viewers. How many? 1000. 1000. Okay. 1200 maybe is what I maybe meant. But yeah, the idea is that Diplo, Di Diplo would be a better example. Di okay. Well, goes on and he gets 20 to 30,000. Yeah, those are the guys that will actually be getting a big check from Twitch. We're still doing it for the love and we're still trying to pay for some of our streaming costs, maybe oh, <laughs> our toys. toys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> our green screens. We're just trying to get, we're just trying to recoup our green screens. That's really what we're doing. So hey, these mics aren't cheap. Yeah, that too. <laughs> you know, and I think someone mentioned in a previous, um, and I know we're kind of getting off topic here, but as long as we're talking about monetization and money, um, getting a sponsor for your show. You know, a lot of people have been able to go to the bar, the club they worked at and say, hey, you know, we're going to be back. And, and um, locally, I do a lot of events for the local community where I live in Utah and Zion, Utah. And so I'm actually going to pitch to some of my sponsors because I have quite a few sponsors for events and see how they're if, if that converts to getting some advertising on Twitch. But there's guys who are doing that. I mean, if you look at like, I think Caribbean and a couple, uh, there's a couple of other guys who actually have sponsor um, logos on their stream. Now, whether they're actually getting, you know, rejuvenated income from that, uh, you know, where it's repetitive or whether it was a one time deal, I have no idea. But I do know that there are people who are willing to spend money um, and uh, actually give uh, financial uh, revenue to a, to a DJ uh, if basically you can show that there's, there's viewers. Uh, you know, it's definitely, definitely, definitely a, a just cause course that you could follow. But ultimately, we are doing it for the passion and for exposure more than anything else. Um, but you know, let's go back to engaging our audience because that's one of the, the things. So one thing that the audience really does not want to hear or see is bad mixing. 
And if you're not mixing at all and you're just playing a video, one video into the next video, I don't even have any words. Like, don't do that. You better, you might as well just do You mean like radio style where you're like just playing a track and then talking and playing the next, you mean something like that? Yes. People want to see or at least visually see the mixing. Now, whether you show your hands on the, on the decks and actually doing, you know, the actual work or not, I feel is a 50, 50 split from what I've seen so far. Uh, some people don't care. Other people find it more fascinating. I think you definitely, when you show that you're actually mixing stuff from, you know, one track to another track, it's definitely more fascinating to, uh, to the viewer. But when you know, when you're not really doing that much and it's more of a, of a focused skill where you're, you're, you're making sure that it sounds perfect. That's not as exciting to watch and you may not want it. You may not need to show it, but um, I think by default people would rather see somebody than not see someone. And that goes for me included. I mean, I'm not, I'm not showing myself on camera, but that's my own personal preference right now. And I don't care. I, I don't care if that, I don't care if I've got seven followers or I mean, seven viewers or 7,000 viewers. It's not going to make Do you care. <laughs> I don't care. Don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm showcasing my skill. And if you want to watch great, if you don't want to watch then no, don't. So, uh, if it, oh, are you sorry? I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 that's fine. It, it, it's, I, I just was, you know, talking about just the, 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 the fact that your audience wants to know who they are, who they're watching. And I think that's important to, have that like Lex, what you do with your setup is amazing. It's, you know, it's definitely in the top tier of, of, of any of the, of of anyone out there of what they're doing with incorporating music videos, mixing, DJing, visuals, graphics, and engaging with the chat room. It's, it's well-rounded. There's, yeah, there's a few others that are doing it that way too. Other people are not doing anything at all other than just putting the videos on the screen and a couple of logos. And that's fine too, as long as the lo- the, the, the content is correct. And that's kind of what I'm going to get into next. I'm going to let both of you guys respond to that. And then we're going to go into content. So what I was going to say is, and, and you kind of touched on, uh, you said a lot. So let me unpack a little bit of that because I, I did have I, some I responses. Tend do, I tend to do that. That's all right. So, save here. So you kind of talked about, you said, if you're not going to beat mix, then don't mix. Is in videos. Is that correct? I mean, if you're not going to. No. So what I'm saying is that, yeah, no one wants like, look, I'm not going to say no one because that's not, that's an unfair statement. But if you're a video, a music video DJ, by default, the whole kind of purpose is to mix one music video into the next. It's kind of the whole captivating foundation of, of the style and the, and the, uh, the culture that we live. So if you're just going to play a music video and let it run all the way out and fade out and then play the next one, that's what, what different are you from a radio or from YouTube? Right. So, so here's, and that's just the age old, that's the age old argument of, Hey, should a DJ mix or should a DJ fade in and fade out? Or, you know, that's so, so when you bring up that conversation, you're open up a can of worms because, um, and I, yeah, I can already see you <laughs> giggling down there, King, um, <laughs> because to play the devil's advocate, um, see, the, like when I mix, I will always beat mix. And if I, otherwise I am bored, there's no point. I will put on an iPod. Like, uh, I mean, there are times where if I'm doing it a community event and I'm doing more MCing, I'll throw on one of my, my DJ mixes or whatever, but it still goes back to that age old argument of, is it okay that a DJ beat mixes or does not beat mix? Because at some point, no one just lands on two decks and knows how to match beats and match phasing phases of, of songs. But so again, it depends on your audience. When, when someone asks me what a DJ is, it's someone that can play the songs in the right order first. And then it's someone that can actually put that together in a creative way. So I've, I've always been of, it's more about the song selection than about the mixing. And that's just, that's just a philosophy because like I know huge DJs that have huge followings that don't mix. So clearly, I mean, I can... I, I could mix on two tape decks with pitch control and, and still kill this other DJ, yet they have a much bigger following than me. So at some point, what am I doing wrong? You know, and so I'm going, wow, they're, they're better at marketing. They're better at music selection, maybe. There's a lot of things that they're doing because I can beat mix with my eyes closed, but it doesn't matter to 
this audience or that audience or whatever. So, so that's why just to play the devil's advocate, I, I would, for us, all of us here are mixing DJs. I would, I would assume 99% of us, we are matching beats. We're doing it that They're way, right? Saying that in the chat. They're all basically saying, always mix, should always mix, mix, scratching, yeah. mix, agree, Lex. They're, 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 they're all saying basically that mixing is the way to go. Yeah, and because everyone here does that. But for the beginning DJ. <laughs> you're preaching to the choir. Well, yeah, that, that, literally, you're <laughs> preaching to the choir. Now, if we were in a beginning, if this was like beginning worldwide DJ Facebook group, People will be like, I don't understand BPM. I don't understand intros. I don't know what does 32 counts mean. You know, so so let's be let's let's be gentle <laughs> and let's be generous. But in general, yes, anyone in this group, you should be mixing. Yeah, you I, should think, be I think scratching. You should be showing your skills. That's what this group is for. Absolutely. I was about to say, I think I should have been a little softer, but if anything, I should have been a little harder <laughs> in, 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 in the delivery and basically like, look. Nobody wants to, to. Nobody wants the radio guy. Just mix, do a good but job. But they might. It no, depends it, on your audience. Yeah. But you don't. It is. It, I agree. Um, you know, it's about the delivery. Uh, it really, at the end of the day, it is about the delivery, about how you're gonna do it. Because you don't always have to mix every song. That's one of the, actually the first things I ever learned as a DJ, from uh, from somebody who took me under their wing when I was, you know, literally still in high school. Um, I, I'd already been DJing for, you know, three four years and. And uh, I started, you know, doing some stuff and he's like, you know, dude, you don't have to like beat match every single song. There's other ways to get from one song to the other. And that was an important lesson that, uh, that I learned and it's carried with me to this day and all the, the, you know, the, the, the protégés, if you want to call them that I've, that I've taken under my wing over the years that I've, that I've trained. Um, I've taken that same kind of foundation and made sure they know that you don't always have to, to mix every song. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's just, it's important. You know, every, everyone's all echo something out. I do it all the time. If you listen to any of my sets, sometimes I'll be mixing something in on beat, but I'm going to echo that thing out or I'm going to spin it out or I'm going to just fade it out quickly or, you know, do whatever you need to do to transition from one to the next. And I'm sorry, maybe I should have been more clear when I said mix every song. When I say mix, I wasn't talking like beat mix. I was not talking about beat mixing every song. I'm talking about keeping a steady flow of music, keeping a steady flow of an audible experience along with your visual experience, not just letting things go all the way out and stop and then start something. That's okay to do every once in a while, but not every single song, every single song. So I uh, want to clarify that and uh, you know, make sure I get that, get that uh, straight for everybody <laughs> yeah because when when um when i'm kind of training beginning djs just say look if you can drop it on count number one you're good most of the time you don't if, if you can't beat mix all you have to do is five six seven eight one and if you can drop that beat on one and fade out you're good 90 percent of the time but yeah. so yeah but i get what you're saying that the whole point is that as as entertainers we're, we're doing this to offer something more than what MTV can do if they played music videos. So yeah. the idea is that, um, yeah, the, we're, and that's, that's why I love Twitch is because it's like, I had all of these random skills, completely random skills, music, DJ and graphics. And like, and I'm talking about random, you know, but in, in our world, they all come together. And in the Twitch broadcasting world, it's like, wait a second, I can do virtual sets. I can do remixes. I can do my own custom edits. I can do mashups. And it's like, and I can actually show it to the world for once. Like before, I mean, you know, you can, you can, where I live, there are no clubs. I live in Utah, Zion, Utah. I have to drive to Vegas, which is a two hour drive. So, so locally there are no clubs. I can't, I have no outlet and it's really even a creative outlet. And so the internet, you know, the internet is a lot of people's creative outlet. And this Twitch channel has been my creative outlet to be like, oh, I can finally, all these random things that I have, they're going to come together and I can do these really fun things and find people out there and find fans out there and an audience that appreciates them because the local crowd cares less, you know, about what I'm doing. I don't have any, I maybe have two local viewers, you know, on, on my stream, even though I'm pushing it, you know, it's probably my mom. I know my mom watches my stream all the time, but, but yeah, this is kind of like our way to really shine and really to get national and international fans. And so like yeah, you're saying, we have to step up our game. 
With that being said, let's talk about how to convert those fans because that's really something that a lot of people are struggling with. And I think that that's really important to, uh, to bring up. So the number one way to convert your fans is to engage with your fans, as we discussed earlier, because you're not going to get anybody to come follow you blindly by just putting follow me and your Instagram page up on your stream. It just, no. <laughs> sorry, sorry to break it to you. I know this and is, knock them for trying. <laughs> there's, there's, some tough, there's some tough stuff here, guys. Some, some, some tough stuff. But if you engage with your fans and you talk to them in the chat and you engage with them and you do roll calls, roll, you might think the roll calls are silly, but oh, it works. It works. It works. And let's talk real quick about the hidden metrics and analytics in Twitch. Twitch has all these different little things that they've set up, all these little different data points and these triggers that they have set up on the back end to recognize whether your channel is worth pushing internally from their platform or not. Things like viewer count, average viewer counts, total viewer counts, people talking at the same amount of time, which is basically chatting. So the same amount of people that are chatting at the same time. So it, it measures you on stuff like this. So it'll measure you on whether you have five people only talking in the chat room or 50 people talking in the chat room. It actually takes that into consideration on where it places you in the ranking and the ranking will get you more channel servers. On average, there are millions of channel servers on Twitch that are just jumping from channel to channel to channel. And a lot of them are staying in the video game lanes, but guess what? I've seen just over the last 10 days, all sorts of gamers starting to slowly jump in here and, and check out the, the page and, and follow. So the reason why, there's, there's no way to know. But data has shown that if your chat is active and people are consistently talking, it's a consistent stream of people talking in the chat, you are more likely to have a higher conversion ratio of any type of action than if it was just sitting there stagnant. And we've even seen this just over the overnight stuff. You know, we have our overnight administrator basically paying attention to the, to the uh, stream to make sure it's all, it's, it's, you know, nothing happens or if there's people, you know, hitting it up and they'll notice that when someone says something in the chat and no one responds, that person usually leaves. So, you know, I'm not saying this for you guys because most of you guys aren't doing overnight things, but it, it, the same goes for when you're doing a stream and you have six people on there and two of them are your mom and your wife. And one of them is your best friend. And the other one is your third laptop over in the living room. So if someone new comes in and they say something like, Hey guys, you need to jump on that. You need to be like, Hey, how's it going? So, and so where are you from? Engage, you know? And that's all the more reason why having a quote unquote in-house producer is always helpful because even if it's just, you know, you just have, you're just getting started and you only have a few uh, people, you know, watching your stream. If someone comes in there and basically says, Hey, how, you know, Hey, what's up? You know, they love what you're doing. Have somebody communicate with them right away. So I got a question now, for you with the chat. So when, when I'm on, like, do you, do you chat with your user ID or, or like the music video DJ ID or the, or the Mr. E ID when, when someone else is on or was it, when I was live, I wasn't doing the chat a whole lot. So how did, so the channel is a little bit different than, than what, cause like I can, I can speak to that. I can speak to both just so people understand, but the, the channel is different than your, you streaming individually on your own page. So that's what I was talking about. I was talking about when you're streaming on your own page, when you're streaming on the channel, uh, it's different because we have people who are getting paid to be on the music video DJs, uh, um, account to engage with the audience if needed. If the audience is going crazy, they sit back and let, they, let, it, let, let it do its thing. There's no reason for them to get involved. Uh, we've now set up bots, which is the next thing I was going to start talking about uh, in regards to uh, um, you know, engaging uh, call to actions. Uh, to make is sure that, that what Streamlabs is doing? Because yeah. I see them up all the time. It's a bot? Streamlabs is a bot. Okay. So yeah, you're you can, and you can go to Streamlabs you can, and you can get there. It's free. Stream, you can engage Streamlabs for free. And then if you want even more features, you can pay for, uh, for, for their uh, additional features. But Streamlabs, you can set up uh, all sorts of bots. You can set up, you know, and you can do timers. So uh, I don't know if you've noticed on the, uh, on the stream lately, there's just the same message pops up randomly. Like, you know, it, it's random. It's like, you know, six minutes and then 13 minutes later or something like that. And that's all just setting up timers on, uh, on, on the Streamlabs cloud bots. 
and then you can program uh, command keys. So that way, if I do like, you know, a certain command, I, I type in like support, and then it pops up a certain message about support. You know, there's one that's uh, for uh, that we created called standby. So if there's something wrong with the stream, then the then uh, then our moderator who's controlling the room can basically hit the standby command and it basically pops up this funny message basically like we're experiencing technical difficulties please stand by while our, while our global IT tech of one using paperclip bubble gum a sundial and a calculator figures out the problem so <laughs> you know just stuff like that and we've gotten we've actually gotten some pretty funny responses off of that people are like cracking up at it and you know like, dude you guys are awesome I'm following your channel you know so just you know creating creative thinking out of the box. Same thing with our landing pages. We're constantly changing the landing pages up. So that way when you're not online, um, it actually uh, has something that's basically like standby. We'll be right back. Or for you guys, if you're just doing your channel and you're not going to be online and you're not going to be hosting someone else's channel or when there's no channel to, to auto host, you should have something creative on your, on your landing page. Uh, I think just having your logo on your landing page is not good enough. I think that that's you need to put like, you know, check out my streaming schedule, follow me on Instagram, you know, go to my webpage, be entered in for a contest, you know, win a free DJ mix, you know, go to dvdjking.com, whatever it is, you need to have a way to engage your, your offline viewers uh, because, you know, you, you need that platform to work for you. It's not the other way around. Um, so you need to set up the thing, the, all the, the systems in place. I mean, you can even, there's auto responders that you can get. That's a paid, that's a paid feature, but you can put in your, so that in your chat 24 hours a day, whether you're there or not, if somebody comes into your chat, even while you're hosting another channel and it says something, there can be an auto responder. It, it, this can get annoying really fast, but if you don't have a lot going on in your channel and you're only streaming once a week, you could basically have it. So if somebody comes into your chat and, and hits a, uh, uh, any, any type of message like, Hey, hi, hi there. Hello, you suck. Whatever it is, auto, an autoresponder pops up saying, hey, thanks so much. I'm not here right now, but please make sure you follow me on this channel and on Instagram. I really hope we can be friends, you know, and then put like a peace sign, and, you know, something like that. And you will, I guarantee you, you'll see conversion on, on more followers uh, after hours and let the channel work for you. So really, you need to just find the best ways that work for your style character, but use these tools, use the bots, use the autoresponders. I just say err on the side of caution and don't program them to be too aggressive or all the time because it can get annoying. Um, you know, like right now in the chat on the channel right now, there's this guy, I have it up on the other screen. So I keep looking over here and there's constantly a lot of things going on. Like, in fact, there's been like six new followers in the last couple of minutes, but the only thing that's happening is Streamlabs is basically just saying, thank you for following. It's not hitting all those messages because it's the same it's actually the same like five or six people talking just over and over again. They're just talking. So I have it set to where I don't want that. My, my, my welcome messages and all that stuff to be hit. If it's the same people, I have a bigger, bigger interval set for that. So um, you just have to look into this stuff. I can't really teach everybody, every single, every single little thing. Cause I'm actually still learning myself. I actually had to go to, to, to Yuma DJ trip to get some help to figure out the bots in the beginning. And I'm more than willing to answer questions if they come my way. But uh, you definitely have a lot of options, especially with the, with the streaming standpoint of view from places like Twitch, because there's all these amazing features that are, that are there that you just have to take the time to program. But once they're programmed, they're up and running and you can convert a lot more followers off of that automatic engagement. Yeah, I, uh, if I can add to that, um, you can, anything you can think of, you can pretty much do. It's already out there. Like if when someone follows you, you can even have that show up in, on your video screen or in your chat. There's all, there's all sorts of bots that do all, all of the above. So that technology already exists. But, you know, and again, going back to having a moderator that's a significant other or a friend or a spouse is... They, you know, you can see they serve two different purposes. One is informational call to actions and those kind of things. So it's definitely a combination of those. It's getting those, those time messages, those calls to action, and then having the personal conversations with people, whether it's you as a DJ doing that or as one of your moderators doing that. Um, and, you know, some of the fun things is that you can actually set up games. There's commands that launch games. There's an eight ball command. Yeah, games, you say, balls, hey, there's all sorts of stuff. Yeah, there's like, yeah, I, I, you would be amazed what's out there that if you're just starting on Twitch, you, you're not even like using, because it was, it was built for gamers. So the chat is very gamified 
And like, like we keep on mentioning Trip because he's the one that's doing it first in our little group. It really is. Like, <laughs> he's setting the tone. You can pet his dog for 50 points. And I'm like, what, <laughs> what, the, hell, what the hell does that kidding. mean? I'm not kidding and, at all. You can, and, you can pet, and I pet, I pet Steve. I pet Steve the dog every time I'm in the chat. So you want to talk about like creating an experience? That's funny. And so, and he has a little icon that he created, a little emote of his dog, Steve. I've met Steve in real life. It looks just like Steve. But so people will giggle, but that created, that like created that connection to Trip. Oh, and he, he, he gets a scratch every time he actually, uh, Yuma or his significant weather will go and actually verify that they have scratched Steve. You and know, it's a great thing. It, and I saw, uh, I can't remember his name. I saw some, I was, you know, I, I do a lot of like, you know, late night searching and see who else is on. And I'm always searching for other video DJs, but I come across a lot of regular DJs and I came across this one guy and he literally put a poll in probably in real time with like five songs that were like, and he basically said, you get to pick which song I'm going to play next. And he basically put five songs in a poll, ran the poll for like two minutes. Everybody voted and he basically played that song next. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, because it was like it was such a real time experience. You can't get that on the radio. You can't get that anywhere else. Like that was a really cool thing to do, and I was like, wow, I should, I, I, I might think about doing that because I've, I've done instant requests, and I think instant requests are like a, a lot of fun. If you don't have a lot of people on your channel, and you're not in the middle of a pre, like a, a plan set or anything like that, and you're just kind of having fun, you're just streaming and DJing. Who wants to hear something? Let me see the most creative request and we're going to throw it up there. I did that last week and uh, uh, somebody asked for hippie chick solo. I was like, cool, let's do it. Nice. And, I, and, I, and I threw it up there and everybody's like, oh my God, I've never even seen this video. You yeah. know, it was great. And, and it kept people on my, it kept people on my stream longer. So, you know, there's all sorts of different ways to, to, to have your engage, the engagement with your viewers and keep them on your channel. You know, like, whether it's captivated mixing or whether it's just simple interaction, people just want to know that there's somebody there and then they're not watching a recording. The second they think they're watching a recording, they're off to the next thing because that's not what they're on Twitch for. They're not on Twitch to watch a recording. Who wanted to hear a hippie check? I want to block them. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> it's a great song. Ooh. Each their own. He's just mad because it didn't happen to him. Because he played the Smiths instead of Hippie Chick, because he's so cool. Oh, sorry. Right. <laughs> um, the Smiths B sides, C sides, D sides. What was it? Um, the Smiths. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's see, I called it. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, yeah, um, yeah. All those tools, those are awesome. And you know, I think I'll probably do that now that you bring that up. I. I used to do that in real life um, when I, especially with like, I would do like, uh, well, like a high school, like when I do like a high school event, I okay. locally, I'll do like a high school event and I'll be like, all right, give me 30 requests and I'm going to do a quick mix, all requests mix for the next like 30 minutes. And they would all come up and I'd write down all the requests and I'd just go bam, bam, bam and knock it out. And sometimes it was smooth. Sometimes it was ugly, but the whole point, it was it was a engaging. lot of fun. It was, it was yes, engaging. engaging. So I, hate, I hated those request sheets. I have to admit, I, all the school dances I did, I hated the request well, sheets. Well, I, yeah, and some, and I'm okay with requests. Like there's DJ, there's no request DJs. And I'm one of those, I'm one of those DJs that I got no problem playing requests. And if I'm at that BPM, it's going to be an instant request. So you just inspired me that I need to actually do like, start doing that again on Twitch and be like, all right, for the next 30 minutes, it's going to be all or, or, or everyone pile in your requests. Okay, we've got 10 requests in here. We're going to knock them all out. Do some fun segments like that. I mean, look at, the, the thing is, is that like, like when I did the Star Wars broadcast, the May the 4th broadcast, I, I didn't have enough time to prepare my content, but the content that I did, I actually formatted it like a television show. Like I'm actually entertaining you. I'm not, yeah. I'm not just mixing videos. It's like, I'm gonna, I, here's like an intro song and I'm gonna come in on the webcam and the TIE Fighter and the Millennium Falcon. And then I'm gonna cut to like a, a music video of the star, you know, like the stormtroopers twerking. And then, I, so it's like, like actually think of it as like a variety show or like a comedy show or, you know, like, like don't, 
think of your show in that sense is that you're you're producing a tv show it just happens to be primarily musical based and music video based yeah so, no absolutely the, the, i think the, the instant requests and the, the that that level of interaction especially for twitch and for for streaming is really 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 positive it, it really can uh, it conveys that you're connecting with your audience you care about your audience it it really shows that connection uh it comes across and even if people are just watching along and they're seeing somebody else request and then that request gets played it it resonates with them too and it might keep them it might keep those silent viewers there even longer and that's another thing i want to i want to i want to se- uh, segue because we got to keep moving uh the silent viewers so I'm sure you guys are all aware that there's lots and lots of silent viewers on this platform. People who literally will t- turn on the channel and they will just literally watch. They don't engage in the chat. They don't talk. It's not their thing. So you have to think about those people. And I had this conversation with one of, one of our DJs on the channel um, yeah, uh, Monday um, about how you never know. He's doing an overnight set. So it's a little, it's, it's tough because, you know, I, I feel for the guys, some of the guys who are doing the overnight sets because there's not a lot of different, um, so there's not a lot of people that are coming into those, some of those overnight sets. So it can be a little discouraging, but you know what though? You never know. You never know who's listening with this thing and you have to treat it like that way. You're, you're DJing in your bedroom against a wall and you got a, a screen and you're basically just playing for yourself. Kind of, you have to act like you're playing for a big audience. There's lots of people listening. Always, always act that way. Always go into the mentality that you are playing for a lot of people because you never know who you're playing for. For all you know, and this happened last week, all you know, you could be playing and somebody could have that their Twitch account connected to a TV inside a business and that's not one person that you're playing for. That's a lot more. Whether right now, obviously, could be a lot less because of the, you know, the current situation in the world, but... Um, the person who I talked to, they said that one of their viewers, uh, twist, you know, sent them a message saying, "Hey, I have you on uh, the TV in my uh, in my store. I I have like a a, a multi purpose convenience store. It's somewhere in Europe. Uh, it's like a multi purpose type convenience store." He's like, "But people are 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 watching and looking at it while they're in here. So there's lots of people coming in and seeing this. this is really cool what you're doing." And he told me that, and I was like, "Wait, what?" That's really cool. So I think as the, especially as things start opening back up, who knows where this is going to go? Not, not just with the channel, just with everybody's channel. You never know that when people are going to be playing you from other people or, hey, check it out or this or that. So I think that you definitely need to always play like there's a crowd. I think you definitely always need to play that there's more than one person listening. And those silent viewers might not follow you uh, directly, but they may follow you indirectly. Uh, or they might go follow you on Instagram. And I think it's important to pro- promote your other channels at all times, any chance you can. You know, hey, follow me on you know, all social media, or this, or follow me on Instagram at this, or follow me on Facebook, or go to my website and you can follow all my channels. <laughs> so, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways to convey that. Um, and uh, I think that everybody should always act like they're playing for people, always. And uh, Scott Butcher. I'm I, I'm being a silent watcher right now. <laughs> Damn it, cover blown. Sounding good, guys. The, the reality uh, is, you hit me up after this. By the way, we have to talk. <laughs> the, correct me if I'm wrong, but the reality is the majority of people don't ever chat. I correct. think I, I think so. So keep that in mind. The the reality is the majority of people don't ever engage. Um, on a technical note, that's also you can set that up in Twitch whether people are able to. People, so people can watch your channel and they don't have to have an account on Twitch, right? I, no. So, uh, no. Uh, on Twitch, they need to have an account. Um, I, need a, I need a second opinion on that. I was told that people can watch your stream, your live stream on Twitch without an account, but if they want to chat, if they want to get into the chat, they have to have an account. Maybe someone can call that play. But uh, We're going to call the sideline refs? Yeah, because sideline ref, trip. Where's, uh, where's, Jason, trip is still, uh, where's, where's Jason Albertson, the uh, the Twitch master? And he he would know. So if if I'm if I'm correct if I'm correct on that, 
Okay, someone says, so it is, it is true that you can't talk. Okay, so you can watch with no account. That's what I was told. Mm -hmm. So be aware that those numbers show up. I'm pretty sure that those, so you could have, you could have 50 people watching and none of them are actually can talk. They actually can't talk, but that's something you can set up in your channel. You can actually say, hey, um, and if you look, there's, Twitch is kind of hard to navigate because there's so many preferences for so many different things, but just know that those settings are there. You can actually set that up to say, hey, um, these kind of people can chat. These kind of people can't. This kind of people actually has to sit here and watch this for five minutes before they can chat. So there's lots of preferences to set those things up. So just be aware, just be aware. Does anybody know if, if does anyone actually have like evidence or have read if we know if those viewers are calculated? Because one thing that I've been paying very close attention to is the viewer counts. And I look at the users in chat and I add them up, right? And I oh. deduct as many, <laughs> I deduct as many bots as I can kind of guess that are there, like commander root feet, you know, uh, there, there, there's a lot of the universe, you know, there's a lot of bots in there. Aiden, um, there, you know, these are all, these all have purposes, but, uh, yeah, universe, uh, store, Cena, Rin Mistino. It, it would be works. very difficult to calculate he, that because those numbers are changing constantly. So, uh, well, I mean, I mean, obviously I know that, but, uh, but what I've done is like, and I think that there's like, uh, I'm really trying to figure this out because uh, so I, I, that, I just typed it in Google. Okay. okay. Says, <laughs> let's, let's hear what Google has to say. Take it away. Google. <laughs> the viewer list is, is displayed by clicking the list button, which is located beside the settings COG at the, what, are, what is a cog at the bottom of the Twitch page? People watching without an account are tallied in the viewer count, but not shown on the viewer list because they do not have a username and cannot chat. Interesting. So they are tallied, but uh, that's it. It's very, very the viewer count. Yes, but not on the viewer list. Yeah. You know, I, cause like I've gone into the viewer list and it says that there's 23 people watching and I'm counting like 59 names in the, in the viewer list. It doesn't add up. But I think that one person did tell me that, that they think that Twitch is just undergoing lots of like updates and that there's a tremendous amount of bugs that are now being yeah. created that are, that they're figuring out. We broke uh, the internet. So I don't definitely don't think it was us because they're, yeah, getting, they're getting 50,000 accounts a day is what I was just told uh, a couple of days ago there's a lot of lag where you're not getting the exact viewer count. So you might be seeing, I mean, I noticed that viewer count will just jump up and down sometimes and other times it's like never changes. So my guess is even though it, you know, there you're, you're probably never going to be able to add up those numbers quick enough for, for them to make sense. But no, no, not at all. Yeah. I just, I was like, well, even last night when Tashi was on and he had 94, you know, he already hit 95 people. I was like, I quickly jumped in there and I was like adding them up and it, it seemed like there was way more than that. It was like, it seemed like there was a hundred and something, you know, 120, 130. But again, I also think it might leave. I think that might be the cumulative people that have shown up and they may have left, but their name is still in there. I also get that feeling too. That's but possible. Anyway, Jason, Jason's saying they do show up, but not, but not count under channel. There's a hidden, hidden viewer count. Interesting. All right. Um, so yeah, that, that's, uh, that's definitely uh, something to look into, you know, but uh, again, back to the silent viewer, you never know who's watching. And then with the silent viewer, uh, that's something we've been doing on the channel that I think everybody should do on their own channels is uh, engage your, uh, encourage your audience to download Twitch onto their smart TV device, whether it's the smart TV them itself or a Roku, oh, actually it's not, it's an Apple TV or PlayStation or Xbox. You can watch on Roku, but uh, you need a, it's like a third party app. It's like TTV viewer or something like that or something, something like that. I'm sure Jason will probably post it up. You know, I think he knows what it is, but uh, there's a, uh, we want to encourage all of the audience to watch on a TV, not their laptop or a computer screen when possible. It's a better viewing experience. The actual uh, resolution comes across much better than, than if it was on your screen. And uh, when people tend to put uh, Twitch on their TVs and turn it on, uh, they tend to watch more and longer because they're not distracted. They don't have the, uh, the, um, you know, the, all the other things going on on their computer between Facebook or whatever they're looking for on a website or, you know, checking their email or, you know, talking to friends. So definitely, uh, um, definitely 
it has a better conversion rate if you uh, put it up on your TV. So encourage everybody that it's a better viewing experience. That, that terminology seems to convey a lot stronger, better viewing experience. Uh, let them know about Twitch Prime so they can sub for free, which helps. Yes, uh, so if you have an Amazon Prime account, then you have a Twitch Prime account. So all you need to do is just go and uh, connect your uh, Twitch to uh, your Amazon Prime, and then you can get a free subscription uh, once a month to any channel you want. So whether you want to use that on the Music Video DJ's channel, or you want to use it on your own channel. Or uh, DJ Lex's channel. Or DJ Lex's channel. <laughs> or DV DJ King's channel. <laughs> <laughs> I had a question, man. You never used wait, to get commercials before we started popping wait, on music video to, DJs. Wait, so now wait, you get commercials. Way to sell it there, King. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was like a... <laughs> uh, let's talk about the commercials. So uh, the ads is what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, on the channel, we're experimenting. That's it. So they, they, they actually... In fact, today we haven't run one ad except for when you, show, when you show up to the channel. So when you first log in, you go to the channel, there's, there's an ad that plays most, for some people. I don't think all people. But um, Lex, you know about that a little bit more than I do. You're a little bit farther along than I am with, uh, with your channel. I, I am, but I'm not sure I can answer that question. Um, I think, um, I, so I, I know that subscribers, if you subscribe to a channel, you won't get, ads yes if you're, if you're a channel. subscriber to the channel you do not see ads at all whether you're just showing up to it or in the middle when an ad is ran um but ads uh ads are dropped and it's basically an encouragement more so that yeah you don't want to see any more ads just be a subscriber to the channel <laughs> that's really the yeah they do it. it's like pay to get rid of ads yeah it's, it's kind of all, like that that's all it is but uh yeah i mean you know you know uh it's something that we've just been experimenting with and uh you know, we did it, we did it, uh, I think on Monday or Sunday and Monday, uh, quite a bit just to kind of see what the reaction, cause you can't just do it once. You got to do it over and over again throughout the field day. Field test, right? Yeah, yeah it, really, it really is. It really is field testing. And I, I did it at least once or twice an hour, uh, on Sunday and Monday because I wanted to see how people were going to react. Like I wanted to see if people in the chat room were going to basically throw their arms up and be like, what the hell ads? Oh, this sucks. What, 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 ah, or people are going to be like, Oh, they have ads now. You know, there are a couple of smart asses like, Oh yeah, they, this show, the channel's got ads now. <laughs> you know, uh, and you know, I just blow past, but past it's part of, it's because it's part of life. It's just part of life. And it's, you know what? Hey, you get to affiliate level and partner level. You're going to be running them too. Cause it's a revenue stream. And yeah. you know, this 24 hour channel ain't cheap. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, uh, and I'm doing it for you guys, but at the same time, I don't want to lose money on it. So if I can make some money back on running some ads and doing some subscriptions and selling some merch, I'm going to do it. But uh, the, uh, the, the ads are, are, are really, you cut, they're almost necessary to, to drive subscriptions because without them, there's really not a tremendous amount of incentives. Uh, you know, some, from some emotes, you know, do yeah. they push your channel because you do that or no, no. unknown. I don't know. I, I so, not, so from what from what I understand is that um, once you get to affiliate level, it's a, affiliate level you make. All right, so someone may have to to call this. When you get to affiliate level, you make ad revenue, and I'm pretty sure that's ba it's either partner or a, or affiliate or, and or both. Um, and it's based off of it's based off of um, CPM. So you make a few bucks for oh, you know. So, stop, stop there. Uh, for those who though for those who do not know what CPM is, maybe we should educate them. So please, please do. You can explain uh, it better than me. It's it's basically uh, clicks per minute. So uh, which translate in the that world to uh, the over number. Uh, so the way they measure it on Twitch is a thousand. It's based off of a thousand. So it's how many clicks inside the thousand person range you get so you don't even really make money on those ads on click-throughs until you have a thousand people right right so anything under a thousand you're getting pennies if not even pennies you're getting yeah. a tenth of a penny but once you get over a thousand and then you can start making like three dollars fifty cents per thousand right so, so, so if you have a thousand viewer now, is that if they click or just views? Do you I, think know? I think it's views. I think the okay. click through is not is 
as I, I'm not, you know what? I'm still. still My guess is it's views. My guess would be views, but who knows? But, but if it is based on views, that means if you had a thousand people watching your channel at once and you launched an ad, you would make $2 and 50 cents or $3 $3 and 50 50. cents. So it's, so it's, it's not huge, but for the people that have 40,000 viewers, that's money. Exactly. So yeah, 50 bucks, a hundred bucks. Every time you drop an ad, you're better off making money off of bits and making money off of, uh, subscriptions and merchandise, which by the way, music video DJs merchandise is launching by the end of the week. You got a website yet? No, you want to help me build one? (laughs) I got some connections. That's a dope logo, by the way. Uh, by the way, the logo (laughs) was created since he just put me on blast with that (laughs) comment by DJ Lex created the music video DJs logo. Uh, and uh, thank you so much because it came out amazing and I've gotten insane positive feedback on the logo. You made that? Yeah. Wow. Cost per thousand. Thank you, Kingpin. And I could be animating it too, doing some 3D versions of it and flying around and whatever, whatever Evan needs it to do. <laughs> Look at you. Aren't you, you know. fancy? Look at you must comment. <laughs> I already got $3.50 coming from ads. Oh, man. Mm. I don't Lex, know. Are we friends on Facebook? We Probably need to be not. friends. We, we should do that. Well, I'm in the chat, so just add me as a friend. Lately, the, the problem is now is I used to be picky with my Facebook friends. Like, I used to have to know that person. And now it's like, if they've got more than two mutual friends, you're my friend. So just, just be warned that I post a lot of crap. I post a lot of food pictures, a lot of dog pictures, a lot of baby pictures. And don't bother him for him for logos. He's got enough on his plate right now. <laughs> well, that's what I was getting to, man. Eventually I'll be doing logos. Eventually I'll be doing the 3D spinning logos, but we'll we'll talk about that later. That that, that is coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, please just wait. Fine. <laughs> 6 feet apart, please. Just put me in your Rolodex under logos. <laughs> right? <laughs> What's a Rolodex? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> um so before we got completely sidetracked, yeah. So uh, yeah, monetization on, on Twitch, there's a lot of ways to go, but um, I definitely think the subscription route is probably one of the stronger ways because it's, it's, it, it would be uh, continued monthly revenue, uh, repetitive revenue. So unfortunately the only real way to, to kind of force people to be subscribers is to run ads because you say, Hey, if you don't, if you subscribe, you don't have to see those ads. Yeah. You're annoying them. You're annoying them into subscribing. But I don't think, I don't think the ads are that bad. I, there's very, I mean, that I personally think you're going to make more money. You find a local sponsor to give you 500 bucks to yeah, your logo yeah. on the screen for the month. I think you're going to make more money faster doing that than any subscriptions or any bits or any, or anything else that you could do on Twitch. <laughs> unless you've got, unless you've got tens of thousands of, of people because until you have, until you're averaging watching your channel at once above 10,000, I don't think there's real money to be made there. So yeah, if there's any like, companies watching this, an extra large t-shirt. <laughs> well, the other thing is, uh, all right, the first person that can pull off a product placement sponsorship, please post it in the group. Cause that's going to be hysterical. Right? So, you know, like my, my Burt's brought to you by Burt's Bees Chapstick. I already got one. So you, you've got one? Oh, are they sponsoring your, are they sponsoring music? Well, I'm, I'm sponsored by them year round anyway. But, oh, okay. But, but, so, but I've already notified them on what I'm doing and they're, they're all on board. So, so uh, when I broadcast, I use my Apple iPhone 11. <laughs> so no, I just, so who, whoever gets the first product placement sponsorship on their Twitch channel, post it. Cause I think that's going to be hysterical. I, I, I actually agree. I, I want to see somebody like that's a challenge. This barbecue sandwich from <laughs> Lucky right. Barbecue I'm throwing, on I'm, Street is I'm great. throwing down the challenge. I'm throwing down the challenge. Doesn't matter if it's like a national sponsor or the, your local barbecue joint. The first person that actually gets their <laughs> the the first person that actually gets product placement while they're on a Twitch. Yeah, not wait, let's clarify it. Not a sponsor. Sp- sponsor's only halfway there. Product placement, like what I just did with the rain can. Rain, total body fuel, it's really good. I'm Zero. sending an email to Trojan yeah. right now. Yep. Yeah. 300 natural uh, grams of uh, caffeine, zero sugar. I'm, I'm going to be broadcast. showing up on my next broadcast with barbecue from the barbecue place down the street. I bet, I bet they're going to sponsor me some, some free barbecue dinners if I eat it on camera. <laughs> anyway, <Yeah>. off topic. <laughs> yeah. 
Harold says he's got a sponsor. I, I I know a lot of people have sponsors, but we're talking about product placement. Like we want to see like a we want to see somebody pay for a freaking like a, <laughs> like a, a, a fix a flat or something. <laughs> get your get get your uh, get your get, get your local strawberries by uh, Martha's Strawberries, <laughs> Highway Six. Ooh, I've got so many up. Op- okay. Just watch this fall. Just watch this fall. Yeah, You're going to see yeah. some serious product placement. <laughs> Check out these 80s, 80s videos and don't forget your B vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, oh, how, we, how far from the, uh, yeah, how far, how far we have strayed today. Yeah, we, it's, probably, it's probably time to wrap this up at this point, right? <laughs> I think it is. All right. So we're going to, let's open up some QA. Uh, anyone who's got a, a, a QA uh, for anyone who's got questions, not, if you have answers, leave them to yourself. If you have questions, <laughs> post them in the comments right now. Um, and uh, if, you, if you need a 3D spinning logo <laughs> until we launch, the new uh the new service you can go to geforce and bother him because he likes being bothered for that type of stuff so um until i lock him up on contract or something <laughs> You're, you can't be sponsored by trojan with a newborn yeah dini's picking on me <laughs> you have a newborn <laughs> yeah she's five oh months. hey i just noticed you got a little crib behind you don't you yeah, right there oh over there yeah oh, that's weird Aww, yeah you, that's a bad that's sponsor been there the entire, that's been there for the last hour and a half and I, you just noticed i just it noticed right it pampers pampers is your sponsor technically, technically that's been in the shot for two hours because we had 25 minutes of troubleshooting in the beginning yeah, I gotta have the rattle, right? there you go make a new you can make a new edit with that so pampers gotta, maybe i'll get pampers to give me some diapers yeah, there we go. Yeah. so evan you've got a question there about channel points oh great something i don't know very much about what is the channel I have a question point? about uh, oh, about it's a Twitch thing. Channel points will be done, yeah. and can Meaning, we have our DJ logo as a feature to pick from our emotes. Okay, so I, I one thing I have learned about emotes <laughs> in the last couple of days is that they don't we, like yours. They don't like mine because it's a letter, and uh, you can't just just this is a just something I learned that I can share with you guys is that uh, it, there's actually a guidelines that you can find uh, on in the the web of Twitch's uh, million pages of, of like, of, of like answers. Cause they've got this insane, like resource of, uh, of all these uh, kind of helpful hints and tips and guidelines and stuff. You can't do a letter or a number, a, a standalone character is what they call it. You can't do a standalone character um, with a, uh, with a logo for an emote. Uh, even though for some, I don't know how we did it, but the, the music video DJs, uh, actual screen name uh if you look on on there it actually has a uh uh uh, the logo next to it and then you know what's weird is that uh jason actually was gifted a month subscription from somebody and he has the logo next to it as well so i'm totally confused about this whole thing i'm still trying to figure it all out but once you you have to get first off you have to get 15 subscribers to even be able to open the emote, um, the custom emotes in your uh, channel. So you have to get to affiliate first, then you have to get to 15 subscriber because you need subscriber points. So you get one point for every subscriber. So 15 subscriber points is needed to uh, get a uh, an actual, um, uh, whatchamacallit, logo. Look it up. Product placement right there. <laughs> Pampers. <laughs> Aww. Like, what the heck see- is this, Dad? What are you doing? <laughs> We're gonna teach her young. <laughs> Wait, is that the infamous Mrs. DVDJ King? Yeah, the infamous DVDJ King. You're popular yeah. now. Whole following. I'll turn you up so you can hear you. <laughs> so, so yeah. So with the with the with the the points, um, yeah. I'm I'm still. I'll be honest, Chris. Uh, I'm really kind of like still figuring the points out myself. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm starting to see people like use the points for like in bits and che- all that stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Where did Yuma go? He knows he, he already solved all these, these, uh, these things. So I, I think, I think maybe the question was, when are you going to set up some custom points? Like for example, Yuma has scratched oh, Steve, oh, oh, when scratched I- Steve for 50 points. So, so I'm sorry, Chris, was that a question directed towards the music video DJ channel? Like when we're going to set up custom points this week, I'm going to figure, I'm going to get that going this week. I've, 
I've been trying to like figure out the emotes and stuff. Cause I want to, I want to put some cool, I have some really cool ideas for emotes and I just have to figure out when exactly I can strategically bother Lex to make them for me. And he also wants to know if you can have DJ logos to pick from at the emotes when you're in music video DJ. Yeah, so I, oh, oh, that would be so like everybody's like DJ logo. That would actually be kind of cool to like to do. Yeah, it would. Good idea. I wonder what the limit is on how many emotes we can put on the channel. That'll be some research for sure. That's actually I'd, not a bad idea to put oh, every, interesting. Yeah. every DJ's emote. So you can like get, once you get a certain level of access, you can like grab the DJ's emote to throw up on the screen. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be, that'd be unique and different. That's a cool idea. I like that. Solve that right after I solve the, the automated uh, title cha channel title change that I have to solve. We have a guy trying to work on an API script for it. So let's see. Is there anyone that, who can put a playlist in the screen from your laptop? Uh, define playlist. You're talking about like just playing one, like literally letting a playlist go. Uh, our good friend DJ Furious got kicked off Twitch for seven days because he did that. For you doing what? You can't, you can't be a radio station. You can't have a, oh. a playlist in your Serato and just literally hit go and let it auto play from one video to the next. That's being a radio station. You'll get kicked off. You'll get banned for seven days. So I think he might be saying, so we talked about, are you talking about like the current playing track? So that's, that's been something that we were looking into. Um, oh, you mean is, like playlist history? Well, like the current playing track, show that on the screen, but get it from your software. There's, all sorts of ways, like that's something, depending on the software, like in Serato, someone has written some kind of combobulated way to do that. Um, th see the next song. Yeah, so. so yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think you're on the right track, Lex. Well, yeah, so uh, I, it's not easy to do, but I think it's out there. Someone needs to solve that with an OBS plugin that talks to Serato and just shows the current playing track or something yeah, like that. I've seen, I mean, I've seen, uh, um, like, uh, Tashi actually last night, he broke his whole, like everything apart. So he actually had his, like his deck, uh, uh, as its own little window on his layout. Um, so I know that there's, but I don't know, I mean, actually so, pulling the scripting from like the actual text to, to be as like an overlay. That would be cool. I mean, it, it, it's definitely gotta be done. You know, um, we could probably hit up Serato and ask them if they have, if they can give us uh, the code for the, the, uh, uh, for the uh, the text uh, to output, yeah, uh, all they all they would need to export is to a text file the current playing track data and let someone parse it. But the the current solution is what you were saying is is OBS allows you to do a screen capture of anything that's on your computer. So if OBS and Serato are running the same thing, just do a screen capture of that tiny little area and crop it down to your current playing song, and you can. Take care well, of couldn't that you way. just uh, you know take your OBS and yeah just just cut out the top of your Serato where it says yeah. the tracks yeah right yeah so you're oh, you were just saying you were just saying that like that or yeah yeah you're so you're literally doing a screen capture of your Serato app where it has the current song that's playing of course you'd have to be able to switch it between your two decks but it's you know it's a workaround. Yeah, I know uh, uh, Curtis saying virtual DJ shows what the next song will be on the screen automatically. I don't know if VDJ is an ideal. So uh, virtual DJ, I mean, yeah, it looks great, sol solid program. I think there's a definitely good percentage of guys who are streaming on the channel that uh, actually are using virtual DJ. Saad, who just commented, it's so funny. I was literally, I said his name and he popped up. Uh, Saad is very knowledgeable in virtual DJ. So anybody who's got virtual DJ questions, uh, go bother him. Um, please don't bother Saad him. knows all. He does know all with virtual DJ. I've, I've pointed quite a few people over his direction. And I, Curtis is using virtual DJ as well, which I just found out uh, last week. So Curtis can also help with virtual DJ as well. So, you know, we, we definitely, um, oh, good. Marcel uh, from, uh, from Netherlands, uh, also virtual DJ for 10 years. So good. All you guys who basically are on virtual DJ can talk to each other on that stuff. But um, I think uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to, for, from a, a Serato or, because it wouldn't be mixed emergency because we're talking about just a text so it'd be from a Serato standpoint. So we can, uh, we've got some contacts. We can reach out to Serato and see if there's some sort of uh, uh, code or some sort of, uh, you know, something we can grab. Because I think it, they're talking about more being able to grab that, that script uh, and be able to kind of lay that into like a, a third, a lower third or somewhere on your scene. 
rather than just screen capturing the uh, the 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 Serato window of uh, the next. That would that would be a really cool feature to add. I I think you know like the you know they have a little next up in the song there or now currently currently playing or yeah now playing i think people just want to now playing what's the name of this song now yeah. playing yeah yeah i think the now playing would be really cool to to have you know you could you, you could kind of build a scene to where you have you know all your stuff and, and your data and everything and then the now and it could be built into that and it could look really cool that's a, that's another way to engage your audience because now you're creating a visual uh, a visual acumen for them to be able to zero in on uh, hundreds of different. Okay, cool. Uh, anybody else got some questions that we can answer before we uh, call it a wrap here for today? Uh, this Friday, uh, it's tutorial will be on OBS. Yay. So, uh, I have strong armed crush into committing to be on that with me as well. And anyone else who is a well-versed OBS, uh, engineer, uh, please contact me if you'd like to be part of that tutorial because we'd like to get all uh, opinion as possible. Uh, I also um, have a little announcement for today. Today at today at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, we have a surprise guest on the channel. So tune in. And then that person will be taking that slot every single week. So it'll be after Nick Nehemiah and before DJ Flips. We have a surprise guest that will be joining the team and uh, uh, being on every week. And this individual has a very uh, a much more unique style uh, than a lot of us. So definitely something different. Uh, so check that out. Um, so I hope you guys tune in for that. 7 p.m. Uh, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern on the Music Video DJ's channel. Uh, what, uh, what else do we got? Uh, any other questions coming through? Scott, did you catch any? I think we're good. Mars Franco, I sent a question. Well, can you repeat your question? Cause I'm not going to scroll back and, and try and find it in the mess of 323 comments. 324. So. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. Some, sometimes it's hard when the, when the chat goes by pretty quickly. But they're so active. We, we were just talking about keeping people active. So let's not discourage that. Well, <laughs> since we're waiting for the, since we're waiting for the, well, if it was long, why don't you copy and paste it? Um, Mars, Mars, let me go ahead and scroll back, Mars. I know, Mar Mars, you're going to probably be on this OBS uh, tutorial on Friday anyway, whether you like it or not. <laughs> he, he, oh, Mars has been the OBS guru lately. How do you do this? How do you do this with Restream and OBS? Okay, oh, what about having a section on our music video DJ screens where we have the main genre for the top 40, open format, 1990, oh, yeah. Latin, etc. Example, small section, top left, ununiform like the bumpers. Yeah. Um, oh, so we're talking about like on the calendar? or? Uh, I'll, I'll say it again. What about having a section on our music video DJ screens where we have the main genre, like what if they're, whatever their set is kind of thing? Well, that's a few guys. Well, you know? yeah. If they wanted to have their own, oh, I'm doing hip hop, you know, put that on the screen. It's well, a hip hop set. Actually, I think we talked about this where we talked about saying, hey, if you're into hip hop, here's all the hip hop shows. If you're into EDM, here's all the EDM shows. And so breaking calendars into genres, maybe, is that what? Or maybe have their genre next to their name in the, I don't know, the weekly lineup or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I, I personally like to play like, oh i feel like hip-hop today or well today there's open do yeah there's you'd be like an open genre kind of thing i'd probably be an open genre or retro most of the time but um we still don't know what he's asking what mars is asking so clarify well i think anyone who wants to put the 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 genre title on their uh um on their actual page uh, is. I mean, more, it's like your own branding, right? Yeah, it's it's no different than than all the other parameters that we've set for for the the, the channel. You can kind of do whatever you want, yeah, uh, as long as you follow stay within the guidelines. Uh, I have made a couple of modifications uh, over the last like you know week, and that's gonna come you know standard. I mean, you know, like you have to play the video bumper. That's just mandatory. You know, some guys they weren't playing it. I'm like, dude, if you want to stay on this channel, you need to play the bumper. I'm sorry. That's just one the one thing I'm requiring because that gives me as the guy who's behind the whole thing the opportunity as we move forward that if I need to if I make a relationship or if I've got rain, you know, coming on board or we get big and I and I'm able to make some massive deal, that's where I'm gonna stick that advertisement. Guess what? 
if it's the deal is big enough, that's going to translate over to everybody. I'm not the type of person that's going to be like, oh yeah, I got all that and I keep it for myself. No, I'm going to share it with everybody. I mean, my end game with this thing would, I would love to be able to, to, you know, make financial revenue available to everybody who's involved with the channel on a weekly basis. Cause I'd like to lock you guys all up on some sort of contract, you know, and basically say, look, you're committed to this time every single week. Here's how much you can get paid. Great. But dude, we're 10 days old. Please by, I love all of you guys. Stop asking me about the, about the money. It's going to come eventually, but it can't come right now. I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't have a million dollars to throw at this thing. So we got to do this organically as a team. And when that, when, as that stuff comes in, it'll, it'll translate and roll downhill. I've said this to so many people individually. Now I'm saying it publicly. So it will come. You stick with me. I won't forget it. It's, King's known me for a very long time. I, I, that's the type of guy that I am. Even Lex, you know, we, we, we Everybody who knows me knows that I, I stay very true to my word. Very true. So stop bugging me about that right now. Let me, let, let me focus on <laughs> getting this built and get us viewers. Because as long as we're averaging 30 or 40 viewers per stream, we're not going anywhere. We need to get those numbers up to hundreds and then thousands. And then we can start talking. So, uh, all right. That was my rant. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm done well, with that. Well, I'm going to have to sign off here in a second. Yep. I'm done with that rant. We're about to call it here. Are there any last uh, questions? Hop on a channel and the moment I want to listen to hip hop, the DJ is playing a Latin song. Uh, I think the only, blah, blah, blah. so that is something I've been thinking about is, you know, on the calendar, I have the three columns. I was actually thinking about on the fourth, making a fourth column and putting a cat, like a genre category, uh, which basically just means even more work for me to do the calendars, but uh, I don't care. I'll do it. Uh, so uh, let's just get a, let's just get a poll going right now. Immediate reaction from the, however many people we still have left in, in this uh, with 26 people viewing. So we'll just take it from that. If you think that I should add a genre to the calendar, uh, which in turn will also be listed in the channel title. So it'll be like, you know, DJ Caribbean, uh, dash, you know, uh, hip hop dash Pennsylvania or something like that. If you think I should, and the same thing on the calendar, put the, put the, the genre. If you guys think I should add a genre, and look, if, you, if you're someone who plays, oh, I'm going to go hip-hop, I'm going to go Latin, I'm going to go all the place, then you're going to be called all format. But if, if you're just going to play hip-hop, you're just going to play old school, you're just going to play R&B, whatever. If you think I should add that so that way it'll help viewers understand uh, what they're about to watch or, or when they can watch something, please put yes or no in the chat. Yes, if you think I should add it. No, if you think I shouldn't add it and shouldn't dive deeper into a, uh, a pigeonhole of a situation where we don't want to like basically say, Oh yeah, that's uh you know, th that's exactly what, what that is. You know, some people think that I should keep it open to where anyone can, you know, just watch it, leave the door open. Thank you King, by the way, for tuning in. Um, you know, you had to go. So, you know, if you're, if you're an all format DJ, it's just going to say open format. If you're, if you're a flashback or retro or 80s, then that's what we, and I'm going to let everybody pick their own thing. I'm not going to pick it for you. You're going to have to submit it. So, so far it looks like it's an overwhelming response of yes. So, all right, cool. And for those of you who aren't streaming on the channel who are responding, thank you. Because those are really the people who I'm thinking I really want the, the opinion from more than, than the DJs who are on the channel. Yeah, that's the other thing too. That's the other thing too is I don't want to change this from week to week or, or day to day. So that's, that's the other problem. Is well, so I think I think, think going to get locked in. So I think there is a need for this, but we just may have not found the right solutions yet. And the right solution is brought to you by Rain Energy Drink. No, so I, I think that... Um, this one tastes like an orange creamsicle, like when you're a kid and you get like the, the orange creamsicle stick, you know, from the ice cream man. It's exactly what it tastes like. Exactly. Like with no sugar, not an ounce of sugar, not a tiny drop of sugar in this thing. So we may have not come across the right solution how to get the genre listing information out, but it is clear that people want that. It is clear that if I'm interested in hip hop, I want to know when to tune in. It's kind of like when I'm watching Better Call Saul, I want to know what time Better Call Saul is on TV. So yeah. it's, a legitimate, it's a legitimate issue. It's just a matter of making finding the solution for for genre based programming versus just dj based programming complicated uh questions with complicated and uh, solutions i guess we're complicated people though hold on one second
our surprise guest is having a problem with getting a stream key. So I just got to make sure he gets it. Otherwise, I have to give him the guest one. Um, uh, oh, yeah. So since there's quite a few people watching here that are, are broadcasting on the channel, something that I'm going to add, I don't know when yet, is I'm, and it's fine because it'll be recorded in the private group. I'm going to start adding a very short video uh, kind of announcement with updates. So you guys can all get that because I'm sick of calling every single one of you. And I think you're all sick of getting calls from me about the tiniest little thing. So I'm going to just record something uh, just literally through this and put it on the private group page. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, okay, good. You got it. By the way, that's 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Surprise guest tonight on the channel. Um, so I think uh, we're going to have to uh, um, give that more thought in regards to adding the genres. So we're not, that's not going to happen for next week for sure. Um, you know what else, you know, what we kind of blew past and we didn't really talk about was audio or video resolution. How did we miss that? <laughs> we got so I, sidetracked. And I didn't know that that was yeah. on the topics. Yeah. That, well, that was part of the etiquette that I wanted to cover. So real quick, oh. obviously that was the whole reason why we're on the microphone. <laughs> So one thing you guys, uh, from past weeks to this week, you can tell the audio is so much better because we're both using professional broadcast microphones and you don't need to go out and buy a professional microphone. It's not required. It's recommended, but it's not required, but think about your audio quality. And here's the other thing too, is if you're going to talk on the mic and you're not using a very high end mixer, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to seem high brow with that at all, but Look, it's day one. You have to invest in your equipment to be able to have the best uh, uh, quality experience overall. You need to make sure your audio levels are, are the same. So your audio level for your mix needs to be here. Your audio level for your microphone needs to be here, not here. There's plenty of people where the music's gone, boop, 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 right? And then they come on and they start talking. Boop, boop, boop. Hey, guys, how? you're like, whoa, what the hell? Do you know how many people... I've seen respond on the chat like, oh my God, I had to go run and turn the TV down because you have to think about that. There's a lot of people who, are, who have it on their TV or have it on their computer and they walk away because they're just enjoying the experience. And then you start talking on the microphone and they have to run back to the TV and turn everything down because it's so loud. So watch your volumes, watch your volume on your mic, make sure that your gain is not cranked all the way up to where you're distorting because you know, you don't want to be talking so close that it's going to be distorting like this. That would be really bad. You want to make sure that you're far enough away from the microphone. Look at the, look at the distance between where I'm talking on the microphone. It's probably a good couple of inches. Uh, Lex, you're the perfect scenario right there. Look at how far away the microphone is from Lex, and you're able to you know, hear them clearly. You don't need to get right up on the mic like this every time you talk. I know that that's a, a bad habit that a lot of people have uh, – have gotten into. The other thing is if you have a condenser microphone, you want to make sure that the microphone is more straightforward like this. So it's straightforward. So you're not actually, there we go. So you want it to be straightforward. So you're not actually um, getting it from the wrong angle because uh, the diaphragm on the microphone is actually centered and you, you're not going to, you're not going to get it to where if you're on like an SM58, where uh, the diaphragm is not centered and you're talking over here, it'll still pick it up like really clearly. Uh, broadcast microphones are more centralized. Uh, Lex, you want to add anything on the mics? I'm really bad at doing that when I'm DJing. I'm totally guilty. And, but a lot of it is because of the moment. I mean, I, I try and be aware of my levels, but a lot of times I'll listen to my recording and be like, oh, my mic was way too hot. But I am actually embarrassed because I have a bad microphone solution right now and I need to get that. Because I'm, this is when I, I don't, when I'm DJing, I'm not using this mic, but I probably why, should. Why is that? Let's, let, I mean, well, I, I see the so, microphone behind see, me. <laughs> so you've got a sure, yeah, it's because I've got a sure. So back there, see, this would have to be hooked up to my broadcast computer and this does not reach. When I'm DJing, that's what I'm DJing off of behind me where this is, this is hooked into my broadcast computer. So I would have to get a really long USB cable. And I'd have to be able to turn this on and off, which I can't do when I'm DJing back there. So that's why I'm saying I need to come up with a much better solution. So, uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I actually, before I went and pulled this from my, you know, all my, all my gear, where all my gears at, I was using this, you know, which is not a yeah, bad yeah. mic, but no, no, no. obviously night and day difference from what I'm talking on right now. And 
you know, I actually have this mic built. I actually have it going through the Pioneer, through the Nexus 900 too. Uh, now, obviously, not everybody has access to to that. If you do, or yeah, or an S9, even the sound cards in, the, in there are, are really good. But if you don't, what I recommend is going through an audio interface and actually putting your 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 audio that's going through your DJ set into one cha- you know one set of channels, and then your microphone actually goes into another channel. That way, you can actually separate the two, and you're going to get a lot clearer audio. And you know what? I'm going to actually table this conversation for next week and i'm gonna ask sean uh budin uh dj buddha to come on because he's actually a on-air radio disc jockey who is very very knowledgeable um with audio and the and and, and audio for streaming and i want to get him to talk to, and kind of go through settings and some things like that for everybody but you know adding compression is always a good thing too but uh the last thing i want to say about audio is you see how lex and i are both talking with headphones this is important you, you should, if you're talking on the microphone on a stream, you should have headphones on. You really should. You should be able to hear yourself because if you hear yourself, you'll know that if you're talking too far away from the microphone, like I am right now, like if I'm talking from over here, it's not as clear. Whereas if I'm getting right up close to personal, I don't need to yell or project my voice. I can talk at a, at a, at a, a level tone and get my message across. Um, okay. So we'll talk more about audio next week. And lastly, we'll just touch real quick on video, which I'm going to go into video a lot more in detail this Friday on our OBS uh, tutorial, which will be at, I believe we're going to do it at 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, Greg, GeForce, are you still here? Is it 1 p.m. on Friday? Uh, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern? Is that right? I think, uh, I think he's still here somewhere listening. So. Uh, I think it's I think it's 1 p.m. Just just kind of keep uh keep keep your uh your the Facebook group you know open and check it out. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll go into video settings. But for right now, I will tell everybody this: 720. Get rid of 1080. You do not need to stream 1080, especially to Twitch. Your output in Virtual DJ, Mix Emergency, Serato Video, whatever you're using should be 720. In OBS or or, or whatever uh, broadcasting software that you're using, that should be 720. So you should really stay at 720. You should be broadcasting 720, and the frames per second should be at 30. So there's a lot of guys who are, you know, who are doing 1080 or whatever, and they're doing 60 frames per second. Not necessary. In fact, if anything, what that's going to do is that's going to slow you. It's going to slow things down. You're going to drop frames. So we'll talk a lot about that on Friday in OBS. Uh, yeah, Saad. I mean, I was on the phone with Saad for a while trying to help him get through that, you know, because he was dropping frames and it, it was definitely, you know, it, it, it sucked because I felt for him. Because uh, You guys got to watch Saad tomorrow. Saad's so much fun to watch. Uh, all of our, everybody who's contributing is fun to watch. It's so hard. You, you know, it's like crack for DJ, video DJs. <laughs> I don't know what I've created here. Hope I don't get anyone divorced. Um, so, uh, you know, definitely uh, frames per second. Keep it at 30. We're going to go into details of all that stuff, bit rate, uh, frame, you know, keyframes, all, all that stuff on Friday because we don't really have the time to do that today. In fact, we've ran over on uh, how long these usually are. So um, we'll go into that. But 720, 1280 by 720 is, should be your, your resolution. We'll go into all the exact settings for OBS and all sorts of uh, – we'll talk about – we're going to talk about import sources, output. Uh, we're going to talk about audio, video, display captures. We're going to talk about all that stuff, settings, bit rates, audio, sampling, recording. Uh, all of that. We're going to go over everything on Friday uh, in the tutorial, but uh, that's going to be it. I'm just going to kind of leave it, leave it there for that. Uh, Lex, anything you want to close with or wanted to bring up that was floating around in your head? I'm, I'm good. I've talked way too much already. Uh, hopefully I could, hopefully you'll let me back on the call one of these days. Yeah. You know, you should definitely come back from time to time. Uh, Absolutely. Good, good having you. Um, we like people who actually talk and, and get involved. Not just All right. stare your gear and headlights. Um, so resting hey guys, DJ face. Yeah, resting DJ face. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, virtual uh, meetup here on uh, Facebook, uh, Worldwide, Video DJs Worldwide Group. I uh, appreciate you guys very, very much for, uh, for tuning in. For all of you who caught this on the rebroadcast, uh, thanks. Uh, comment, uh, ask questions, do whatever you need. We do check back, uh, at least I do, check back uh, quite frequently on, this, um, on the recordings. And I know Crush does as well, since he he hasn't really able to make these things right now. So we can definitely answer those questions at a later date and time. 
But until then, uh, Friday, uh, I believe 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific is when we'll do the tutorial on OBS. And uh, support the channel. This is now more time than ever that we need your guys' support to be blasting it out, getting your friends to, to check it out, putting it on your social media, whenever you're doing, not only just when you're doing your set, but like if somebody else, if you have a you know, friend or whatever, just promote the channel. We need the, we need the initial push on the, on the initial promotions. Um, and I pushed everything back a week. I was going to do uh, kind of strategic partners this week, but I'm going to do strategic partners next week because I've been aligning myself with certain strategic partners who are going to help us uh, push it out to their audience. And then the paid advertisements are going to start the week after that, which will hopefully start bringing in some more eyeballs. And I just, I think, closed a deal with one of the gamers on Twitch that's going to actually start doing raids uh, with their uh people uh he's gonna hopefully raid in with like like i don't know like eight or nine thousand people um so uh we'll, we'll see keep your fingers crossed on that yeah. uh the the goal here is uh, oh oh that's another thing i uh i have an idea and I'll, on facebook there's lots of groups that are follow for follow and i think that it's not a bad idea to go in there and and basically uh you know try and leverage some of these these guys who are doing follow for follows where they'll follow your personal channel if you follow their channel well if you do that and you tag the music video dj's channel then we'll follow their channel too so they get two for one it's more of an incentive to get more eyeballs to the channel because i don't care how many people the music video dj's channel follows i mean it's not like we're, the music video dj's channel is ever going to be watching another channel because it's on it's on 24 hours a day so we could follow 10,000 people it doesn't make a difference so uh that'll get you a follow and it'll also get them two follows so i think that's kind of a good idea uh i would love to feedback on that from anybody it's something i came up with yesterday so um anyone who's got an idea or think that that's a good idea or think that it's something that might work please you know you know speak up voice yourself uh but if you tag uh if you tag music, the music video DJs Twitch, uh, it, when you're posting, uh, you know your Twitch page, and then you post, the, just do a double comment. So comment with your page. Hey, followed back. Put your page. Uh, also, gonna have this channel follow you, so then they can follow the, the channel. So basically, they're getting two follows. So um, just an idea. See if we can. Uh, uh, just don't go into a big stream and do follow for follow. Oh, uh, well, I don't know if you guys noticed, I deleted the, uh, the follow for follow in this group and I'm going to restart it. Uh, I'm going to restart the follow for follow, um, in, uh, the Facebook worldwide video, the Facebook worldwide DJs group. And I'm going to kind of, uh, um, I'm going to kind of, uh, do a little thing differently because since we're a private group and we're a pretty tight knit community, I'm going to post a rule on there too, is that the way you follow someone and let them know that you followed them is to click like. Don't post your channel, okay? They'll see you on their Twitch channel and they follow back. I'm gonna start letting my administrators delete anyone who replies to somebody posting. So if you put, if I put up DJ Mystery, right, and and you and and someone says, hey, just you know, just followed, and then they put their Twitch channel there as well, which is what everybody was doing, then I'm gonna we're gonna delete that comment. So just click like and follow their channel and they'll follow you and you that and, and follow back. So that means you need to do the same thing. If you're looking at your Twitch channel and you see people that you recognize, follow them back, follow them back, follow them back. We can't, we can't get you to keep putting, just post your, your channel up there and everybody go through and just follow all the channels. Like that's the way it needs to be. You don't need to re-comment on every single person who posts their, their channel. You should just continuously look at that, that thread and maybe see where you left off. You know, but adding the channels over and over and over again, it's, it's too much. I mean, I think we got almost a thousand comments and I had to delete it because it was just too much for people. And the, the overall goal of following everybody just disappeared. So, cause it was too much. People are like, oh, I'm not, I'm not looking through a thousand comments, but if it's 200 pages, 200 comments, and all it is, is the comments are everybody's individual page. I think we'll get a lot more conversion, a lot more traction with people actually following all the pages and then everybody getting follows. So, um, so I'm going to restart it. Uh, I'm going to restart it tomorrow because I want it to be the, the Thursday Twitch roll call. Also, uh, if you're watching for the first time, uh, cause we've been adding a ton of new, uh, video DJs to this thing every single week. Welcome. 
at the at the end of the uh, broadcast. <laughs> we do this every Wednesday, and uh, I'm DJ Mystery Evan Weissman. That's Lex, aka DJ Bueller. Uh, and that's it. We'll see you guys online. Uh, check out this special guest tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, and the tutorial on Friday right here on the group page uh, where we'll be covering OBS. Take care. See you soon. Later. Have a good one. We're off. Okay, cool.